What the fuck is up, everyone? Ready? Let's do it. What is up, everybody in the world watching this podcast right now? Water Tower Podcast, episode number 22. That's number 22, Jay. I know, man. <laughs> I took Spanish one in high school. <laughs> nice. And I learned it from the taco truck, actually, because I ordered 22 tacos all the time. Ah, there, well, there you go. Whatever. 22 tacos. Por favor. Uh, so subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Patreon. Give us your money. Stuff. Patreon. Yes. Buy us beer. That is new. So, yes, please buy us a drink. You know, we're actually um, – I think we're both doing a little cleanse here, Jay. Is, uh, is that right? Yeah. guess we are. But, yeah. hey, we're also looking for an intern. Um, you want to work for beer? We'll give you like a six pack an episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, you must do everything and we can negotiate. Yeah. And, and by, by everything, we mean everything starting from wiping our ass. Yes. So that's, you got to start high with negotiation. So wiping our ass probably won't happen, but exactly. we got to start there. And I have uh, calluses on my feet. If you, can, <laughs> you know, Ew. those off too, that'd be great. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, seriously, if you're in SAC and you'd like to do video editing and, uh, stuff like that. And uh, you just want to get some experience? Fucking hit us up, man. We'd love to uh, give you that experience because uh, editing this shit is is fun, and I think we both do a decent job of it. But uh, well, we want to grow. We want we want to go on the road more. And you don't have to be a professional. Obviously, we're not going to pay anything. So like, <laughs> but like someone that's into it and just wants to dick around on uh, Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, uh, we want to grow this thing. But right now, we're kind of tied down with time with editing. Right. So if someone's down, do it. We're not sticklers we're just fucking two dudes we're just we're just rolling with the punches so mm -hmm. uh we don't expect uh anyone crazy just someone that wants to get into it yeah right and hang out with us cool motherfuckers yeah because we are cool we are the coolest speaking of which you know what we went down to the central valley we and did. did the live show yeah and that was fucking awesome jay i had a great time it was great i had so much fun i i thought i was gonna die <laughs> we did like an all-day fucking drinking event we went to the river uh check out episode 21's on now but uh the river clips in there um uh but yeah dude uh saw my fat ass and i've been on the cleanse ever since <laughs> that's all it took huh beluga well bro it, it, all it took was a video of you on the river and i need a tan yeah because usually uh i hear a lot of guys do this they they can gain weight but they look in the mirror like looking good bro or women like they could look good and are like i'm fat yeah right <laughs> it's like opposite so so yeah so that's the kind of shit that we want to do, man. That's the kind of shit that we want to do. We want to go out, do field stuff, uh, you know, record in the field. And then if you're an intern, hey, we just send you the audio, the video, and, and you link that shit up and make it happen. We have to go to the Central Valley at least once a month, I think. That was too fun. And we Dude, could like fun. we could have Kobe Mike on, but anyone on, you know. And uh, uh, it'd be cool once things open up to set up shop at like the Orange or a taco place and right. have a mystery chair where anyone could sit down, even some Ooh, random fucker. Ooh, I like it. But like, uh, especially want to do stuff around here in SAC and, and – uh, uh, you know, do some things like that and uh, the river and show like some little trails and shit and just uh, have a good time and record it. And yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we've, we've talked about it. I mean, you guys heard of talk about, you know, doing extra stuff, but it's again, we get so tied up and doing the editing work and, and, and this kind of stuff that it's, it's like a job. It's like, it really is like a job. And so if we can get someone to, to help us out a little bit and get some experience, that would just free up some of our time to do some of that other cool shit. Yeah. Like a uh, sleeping, Exactly. Yeah, you sleeping's know. good. Well, I don't know about you, Jay. You Backstroking know. in my Olympic sized pool in the backyard. Yeah, exactly. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. The high dive. <laughs> yeah. You know, doing you know. some uh, magnificent dives off the high dive in your backyard. Go to the cabana, smoke a bowl, you know, important yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. The important stuff. But also going to different places. I mean, your dad's in Panama, you know, living yeah. his life. And uh, airports are still closed, man. Are they? Yeah, I'm dying to get down there. Yeah. And he's trying to actually, he might be coming back. So we might get him on here, but he's, uh, his plan changes every time I call him, but he's he's got to figure out some banking issues and stuff, and he has to like be present. So he's thinking about pulling the boat out of the water for a little while and coming over here. Okay. And he's like, "Fuck, I don't want to go there for the winter." I'm mm. like, "Damn, you want to go to California for the winter? That just shows you you've been in the Caribbean way too long." <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, what does that mean? Like, he he stores it. He has to pay like a storage fee. Yeah, you like yeah, it's like pretty normal because they have to take them out every once in a while to paint the bottom or whatever okay. maintenance, but. uh yeah, you store it and they like just like a parking garage or something for boats, you know? Okay. Yeah. You see a bunch of them out there, tarp some somewhere, you know, kind of like a parts, a uh, car part spot. Oh, okay. Car part spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's just like, yeah, you can pick just and pull. Pick and pull. So you see boats out there <laughs> rusting, you know, right? People nice. thought they're going to fix it up and never did. That type Dude, of thing. you know what's funny is that, uh, you know, episode maybe two, three, four around that area, you were talking about 
getting some time off of work so you can go visit your dad and, and now you don't even have a job and you and can't I, even get down there i quit my job had some had some money in the bank and uh yeah that yeah. did not work out <laughs> And that money's running out. By the time they open, I'm like, sorry, I'm broke as a joke. Can't make it, Dad. Dude, I, I've been so pissed off about that. And especially, Nick, when hearing, I, I haven't researched it enough, but hearing these rumblings of CDC and their fucking uh, pure COVID deaths is like under 10,000. That's ridiculous. Compared That's ridiculous. to 183,000. Well, I'm sure you've done a little more reading than I have because I haven't done Not much into that. it. But uh, I did see the numbers. And mostly yeah. just uh, post uh, people are posting on yeah. social media. Uh, but fuck, from 180,000 to 10,000, that's a to huge shut down jump. the fucking nation, dude. That's insane, dude. But you know what? I mean, I have to say, right? Because I mean, obviously, we know that those numbers are fucking blown out of proportion. We hear yeah. all the stories, not only from regular people, but from doctors, from people in the in the uh, hospital uh, field. You know, yeah. I've heard from personal people that I've talked to. Like, yeah. yes, this is happening. People are lying about COVID deaths, right? Because you get money for it or whatever the case may be. They're just being overblown. So and not we, like lying, but like they get to be like 89 with having a heart attack and they would have had it without COVID, but they happen to have COVID. Right. You know, exactly. so like yeah, oh, COVID yeah. death, not a heart attack death. It's like, exactly. Huh. So it's, okay. so it's, yeah, I guess it's not lying, but it is stretching the truth <laughs> a lot. Maximum stretch, maximum of, the truth. stretch yeah. of the truth. Good, good way to put it. But at the same time, it's like 180 to 10,000. Like, yeah, like that much. Like, you, you really think that it's that much? Well, and that's like why, uh, oh man, like I've been wanting to go to jiu jitsu because I'm getting fat, like a beluga whale, as I mentioned <laughs> earlier, and I'm as white as a beluga whale. But like, it was Especially like, with um, your shirt off. Yeah. Yeah. Check out that river, uh, river thing. <laughs> I'm, fl- I'm, I'm surprised I didn't float off. <laughs> Imagine you just see me. <laughs> Episode 21. Check it out. It's check fucking it out. awesome. But, but yeah, it's like, uh, so I, but like, it's like my girl's really paranoid on this shit. You know, she comes from San Francisco. That's a, a bubble, just like the Central Valley's right. a bubble. It's like one of these extreme bubbles in, and it's very extreme right now. And so, and plus she works with all these doctors out of UCSF, which is, you know, kind of a, a left school. So they're taking this shit extreme max. And right. so it's like, it's a headache every time just to, okay, I want to have this person. We had Dr. Odin over. That was, yeah. that was oh, a man. fun conversation. We had to jump through hoops to get that done. Oh God! Yeah, set was, up a whole another room. Oh fuck you, man! I had three days of arguments with my girl. <laughs> Jesus! And then I started. Oh man, it was hell, man. And then like to go jujitsu. I haven't gone jujitsu. It's been an argument every month. But uh, I'm going now. Fuck it. Do it. Do I it. I gotta man. go, man. I'm, I'm gonna get in shape first a little well, bit. And but. you know what? I think. I mean, we're opening up. You see more restaurants opening up. Actually, in California, they just approved like barber shops and salons and things like that. To salons indoor or outdoor? Pretty sure indoor. I think indoor, but except San Francisco is San Francisco. I read today that they only opened outdoor. Is that right? Yeah. Well, you heard about Nancy Pelosi, right? No. <laughs> what happened? You know, hey, miss, wear a mask and stay inside forever, bitch. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that group. You know how I feel about Gavin Newsom right. and Nancy Pelosi. They're uh-huh. all like connected and, and Kamala Harris. I don't like that group. But um, uh, yeah, she a video was released of a. Uh, oh, actually, I have it in my notes because I did a little research, Nick. She has notes. I got notes the first time in a while, but uh, Nancy Pelosi, she got her hair done with, and there's video released of her in a San Francisco salon, not only in a hair salon, which is against the city regulations, the COVID regulations for the city that she violated. She also didn't have a mask on. Wow, getting yeah. her hair done? Yeah, and it just shows her walking. Yeah, she got like a blowout or something. What's so that? What the fuck's a blowout? Uh, I don't know. I think it's like. Yeah, have you seen her hair? <laughs> but like, it, it looks like something about Mary with the cum in it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi's hair looks like something. Is that about hair like, gel? It's cum. Yeah, right. But uh, it was a, the salon's called East Salon, and uh, the owner I think put her on blast because they've been shut down for six months. They're one of the last people to open up. And okay. I know a girl, a, a lady, I should say, a woman, and Visalia, um, been known her for a long time. We got Starbucks. She just was in the area. Was a hairstylist, does nails and stuff. And uh, she's got, you know, a husband has gone through some some medical issues uh, before COVID and all this, you know, and she can't work. And she's bitching like, I don't understand, like, how this other shit's opening up. And we're the last state in the United States. Completely understandable, man. Yeah. And, and, and then you got Nancy Pelosi, the one preaching this in a salon in San Francisco and got caught. And no um, mask. it's all over the, uh, you know, the right took it and ran with it as far oh, as I could. But hey, bitch, you're going to set the rules and you're going to guilt other people and practice what you preach. You have to. So 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 the, the owner of the salon posted this? So they were shut down. Okay. And uh, she apparently her side is coming out with their argument. I read a little bit about it because she's been asked like publicly already. And yeah, she's like, of course. Ah, you know, it's just some stupid old lady bullshit. Mm-hmm. But she was like, um, 
Apparently she had a normal hairstylist that comes to her home. That's what they're releasing now. And he couldn't make it. So he recommended a friend that worked at a salon in San Francisco, East Salon, that allowed one person at a time to come in, mm. which is against city violations. Right. Any indoor salon, right? Yeah, it can't be inside. So okay. the owner said she got a text message because they rent chairs out, right? She just owns the building and they rent oh, okay. the chairs, right. you know, like barber, same shit. Yeah. And uh, gets a text like, hey, is it okay if I go at 2.45? Da, 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 da. Uh, Miss Pelosi has an appointment at that time. Da, 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 made an appointment. She's like, wait, Nancy Pelosi? Like, what the fuck? And she's like, oh, is it like, I think she's even mentioned like she didn't know if it was like a setup or something because the the rule, the person making the rules is coming in to break the rules. So, what, man, that doesn't make you nervous. Oh, wow. Yeah, totally. And fuck. she's like, so I don't know what if she said yeah or no, but. That's supposed to end up going in there with this hairstylist that was recommended by her hairstylist. And they have a video clip of her just walking with like the thing around in her hair and no mask on. What thing around? Like a gown? The thing you wear when you get your hair done. Okay, did. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't um, know. Yeah, gown, I guess. But uh, uh, a druid ground, a druid ga gown. I can't say that. Druid gown. You know, the druids. Druid gown. The oh. Druids. Oh, shit. So, so, so was the person doing her hair wearing a mask? I think he was. He was oh, walking behind dude. her. Okay. He was wearing a mask. And, uh, but the lady was like, this is bullshit. I've been closed six months and she's in my fucking salon right now getting her hair did Not by mask. someone renting my chair. This is bullshit. I'm putting her on blast. So she fucking Good. released it. Good released for her. Video clip. But I suppose she's mad saying she's been set up. She feels and how I know you. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then Donald Trump's running with it. He's saying that the, <laughs> the, the owner should run for Congress. <laughs> that's cool. apparently all it takes. Right. Uh, but it's, you know, it took balls for her to do that. Cause, uh, hey, she her might, business is on the line. She might be suicided. <laughs> <laughs> You never know. But yeah. But that's fucked up, man. That, Dude, that is fucked up. I think man. if you're going to preach something so strongly, you have to make sure you don't break that fucking rule. Well, and if you preach it that strongly, you, it, you would think, I would think someone on the outside would think, yeah, that person really feels that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Practice what you preach. Practice what you preach because otherwise you're lying. Otherwise you you don't feel that well, way. Well, you're saying that I'm above you people. Right. I have the money, I have the power, and I could do what I want, but I tell you, you can't do it. That's right. what it comes down to in my opinion. But I'd rather see you with messy hair than right. doing this. You know, that would have been a better look. It, dude, <laughs> no no pun intended. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. No. 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 There, there you is. go. Uh, light blue, light blue. What, what is that color? A girl will tell you that Turquoise. exact color. <laughs> oh, your girl, don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know what? That um, it, we just had this conversation the other day, Jay. Not on the podcast, but I think it was maybe we did have it on the podcast. But uh, Gavin Newsom's businesses too. I mean, they never shut down. He has a couple wineries or something like yep. that. And I never did any research. I never read into it, but I was just kind of taking your word for it. Well, I saw this other thing came on. Oh, sorry. No, I mean that was it's the same concept, right? If if yeah. you're gonna tell everyone that they can't open your business, even though I mean, who knows what the stipulations are with his business? If if you know, because I know certain businesses were able to stay open if they're outdoors and you wear masks and there's certain rules, but at the same time, it's like if you're telling everyone to shut down their business, why not just shut your business down? Be, well, be the bigger person. Even if it's within the law, I think it more morally looks good and gets people behind you. Right. Especially got people attacking you left and right. Exactly. I think it's a good look. And especially when you're, you can afford to shut down where a lot of people <laughs> right. can't. But I, I heard, I don't know if this is true, but when this came up, something else came up that another picture was released of Gavin Newsom having a, uh, a, his winery through a event. And there's no mask and everyone's sitting at these round tables and it's fancy. It's outside, wow. but not six feet apart and all that, no mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all fancy looking and like Richie Rich looking, but I haven't done enough research to see if that's real, but I, it doesn't surprise me, you know? Yeah, like, right. Uh, yeah, same here. At the end of the day, that shows how ridiculous these rules are because it's like everyone breaks them, even the people making the rules break right. them. Right. Yeah. Which, which goes right in line with what the fuck is going on, right? Like we didn't know from the start and we still don't know what's going on. Like it's, it's fucking weird, man. I, you know yeah. what? Historically... Maybe there's been a time like this, but it just seems like this is this is out there, man. Election year, you know, and there you go. And it, it, it's never gotten this crazy, I don't think. But like kind of going back to I, I might have said this on podcast. So stop me if I have, Nick. But kind of with Gavin Newsom not shutting down these. I think he even opened up a new restaurant mm -hmm. during this pandemic. Um, not sure on that, but it's uh, the winery has stayed open, but it's. So if you can make the rules to make sure that the winery could stay open, but not the salon, you know, like you could kind right. of fandangle it. So that gets weird. But like Fidel Castro, I know a lot of you probably hate him. Um, and I have a love hate relationship with the guy as well. I used to be deep into him, but he, um, um, that sounded so gay. <laughs> deep into Fidel, bro. And he was deep into Jay. Yeah. No, only me, bro. <laughs> 
capitalism <laughs> <laughs> always goes deep into socialism. But uh, he, uh, when he took over, when he took over Batista's reign in um, Cuba, that was American backed and mafia backed probably. But uh, he, he gave up the land, you know, socialism, you work the land, you give it to the government and they take care of you mm. basically. Um, uh, and he, um, his family was wealthy. He went to law school and all that before he got exiled and came back. And he, um, the first piece of land apparently he gave up was his family's land, mm. which is a large plot, which that just Jeez. shows a good representation. Now he did a lot of the fucked up shit, but that's a good way to show like, Hey, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing what I say. Well, so that's you how you too. get your people behind you. Yeah. Don't yeah. Get corrupt. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And you know what that, that, you know, it reminds me of like Saddam Hussein, right? Like we go and I don't know anything about Saddam Hussein, but I do know that, when we went over there to kill him about mass weapons of mass destruction and all this stuff, right? It's like you go over there and people hated us for doing that because they loved him. A lot of people loved him and cherished him because eh. no, that's not right. I mean, it's from what I, I remember reading an article and it was like, you know, there's even though some people hate him, he did a lot of bad stuff. There was a lot of people behind him because he was like that. He would always like go into the town and, and shit like and give, you know, stuff. And no, uh, he was, uh, I don't know. You know, I wasn't, from my rack from from what I've looked into over the years is that um, uh, Saddam had two sons, you know about them, mm -hmm. Uday and Udon. I don't know, Uday <laughs> and something, but uh, they were the worst. But um, and even Saddam had a problem through one of them in jail. Uh, but they were known to there's rich, spoiled, fucking drugged out mm -hmm. kids. You know, I think when they died, I remember when they died, um, they had like Viagra all in their pockets, apparently oh, they false press to make them look bad. But there's a bunch of accounts of them going to weddings and taking the bride. Just being oh, wow. drunk at a party and seeing a wedding, running over there and taking that bribe and shooting That's people. Uh, I think he hurt his leg or something, one of them, and he shot his friend in the leg because he was pissed off that he was walking. Like crazy wow. motherfucking stories. There's a great documentary. Don't know what it's called, but uh, <laughs> Saddam, I don't know. It was on HBO a few years back or something. But it, um, yeah, I forget about all this. We grew up with that, but I go, oh, yeah, I remember like the Bushes gave him 48 hours or 24 hours to leave the fucking country. But mm -hmm. they were bad. And I had the opportunity to talk to someone who was raised in Iraq. Cause I got, you know, my brothers in the military, my cousin, other people, sure. you get the military side, but I, I was working in the Netherlands and I came across uh, an Iraqi student. I said, Hey, you know, it's very non-Dutch to do this, but very <laughs> American. But I was like, Hey, you're, you're from Iraq. He's like, yeah. He's like, you're American. I'm like, yeah. He's like, Oh shit. Cause there wasn't a lot of Americans there <laughs> in that school. And I was like, I gotta ask you, man. And let me know if you want to answer, but I've talked to a lot of Americans about this and I have an opportunity to talk about someone from Iraq about this. What do you think about the American war in Iraq and Saddam and all that? And he says, Saddam was horrible. Mm -hmm. Saddam was God awful. Uh, you did not want to mess with them. A lot of people went missing. A lot of uh, graves that have been found, mass graves. Right. Um, uh, Sunnis, Sh Shiites, there was definitely that going on, you know, different types of Muslims mm -hmm. that have been fighting since the dawn of time and we're still doing it now. But he, uh, anyways, long story short, he, he said, you know, he was awful and the U.S. came and it was exciting. But I'm here now because there's no university in Baghdad. There used to be mm. a university I should go to when Saddam was in control. Was it good, right, wrong? I don't know. All I know is I used to go to school when Saddam was in, but I could have crossed him and it would have been bad. But I probably would have been all right statistically. But now I have to leave my country to go somewhere else to go to study. Mm. So it's like a gray answer. It's like, fuck. Yeah, right. I can see that. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Interesting, man. Yeah, but you know what? Coming back to California and shit, the fucking nation in general. I, you know what I, I was reading about the Feds buying stock because our economy is getting ready to take one of the biggest fucking shits in history. I have a few stocks, and today was a. I saw it prepared. Actually, TikTok is amazing. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, everything in TikTok seems to, not everything, but a lot of stuff. Like ah, it came true. Like, mm. but uh, this guy said that the crash is happening tomorrow, and I looked, and I lost three hundred dollars today. I was up like Damn. nine, you know, I have a lot in like a thousand bucks right. and it's dropping. I'm going to leave it in forever, but it was like money, gamble money, like mm. um, just to test the stock. But um, I think it's going to get worse. It seems like. Well, it said uh, I wrote uh, it was a Forbes article and, you know, those articles. I don't know if you've ever read, though, but they're mm -hmm. fucking ridiculously long. Mm -hmm. And so it was a long ass article and there's a bunch of numbers. And, it, you know, it's this economic guy from some university writing the article, whatever. But he was saying that the. The, the federal government has never done this before. And they're talking about trillions of dollars that the government is going to invest in the stock market. So that way it doesn't crash, mm -hmm. which I don't know anything about, but some people say it's not a good idea, but he's saying, it, yeah, it may sound like it's not a good idea on the surface, but unless you want our economy to tank and fucking everything gets disrupted, like that, it seems like the only option we're, we're going with right now. 
Yeah, there was a break. Oh, fuck. I wish I knew we were going to talk about this. I could relook it up. There's a breakdown on this that like when COVID hit, the economy was doing good or, or but like it, obviously people were unemployed. Like it was a mass unemployment rate. Right. So how is that possible? And I looked up a study like this, like they're not they don't correlate as much as you would like to think. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't remember enough to talk about this guy really broke it down. And um, I, uh, I think he was saying why it's good that the economy is doing good, even though it doesn't look that way, because that's like once that's gone, then. There's no hope, <laughs> but, right? But I don't know. I don't know enough. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I, and I, I actually, I didn't even think about bringing it up. It just kind of how much money? To me. uh, it's like one point two three trillion. That's scary. That's yeah. a, dude. Well, we're already in debt up to our eyeballs and trillions. It's just scary. Well, it is scary, man. And you know, and again, going back to the COVID deaths and the real deaths and and the deaths that's been reported and and the now this is like. <sighs> so much information out there man there's so much information out there what do you believe what's good what's bad it's it's like damn well um the kind of brings me to my next subject is uh bill sb 145 california mm. what got, is it uh it is so it's it's got passed by senator scott wiener <laughs> Yeah, I'm not making this shit up. Wait till you hear what this bill is, Nick. <laughs> Wiener comes into play here. Let's hear it. Uh, so he's passing a bill, SB 145, which is, um, and now I'm going to, I did research on both sides just to make sure, um, which I, I don't know if it affects my first opinion, but it's basically a, a, the, the bill would exempt from mandatory registration under the act a person convicted of certain offenses involving minors. If the person is not more than, 10 years older than the minor, and if that offense is the only one requiring the person to register. Now, that's a hard thing. That's like reading the Bible, right? The Old Testament or something. Now, why do they make bills this way? Because they sneak things in. They make confusing language. Yep. You could say, so basically it's saying that a 14-year-old and a 24-year-old could have sex. And he doesn't have to register. As or long she as, doesn't have as to register. As long as the 14-year-old is cool with it. As long as, so basically... Uh, basically, um, like he can't, uh, it's, it's so, okay. How do I, how do I attack this? Well, it sounds like, it sounds like that. Um, well, just reading that, that lingo there, it sounds like if the 14 year old wasn't okay with it and she wanted to press charges and then the person got busted, didn't have to register if it was in that 10 year period. Right. Yeah. Which is a long period. That's like 14 to 24. Dude, fuck. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But, but the 14 year old gives consent. And it's okay. But God damn a 14 year old, they're not even a doll in the, the eyes of the, the country. So um, if the 14 year old is a willing participant, it's fine. Um, it, it's, it feels like it's protecting sex offenders more than children. Now, Scott Wiener actually met, I didn't know it was him. I, I heard the name and I looked up his picture. <laughs> I met that motherfucker. Do you remember, did I ever tell a story on here where he, um, he, I was in my the Richmond neighborhoods, like not a popular neighbor in San Francisco is all I could afford at the time. I was paying five hundred bucks a month in a closet. I was broke. I was trying to build my design career, and it was it was. I've never heard you tell a story about a Scott Wiener. Yeah, well, I didn't know his name was Scott Wiener, but he also he was mostly Chinese people, a few white people, but it's mostly a Chinese neighborhood. Uh, it's actually Little Russia, although you don't see many Russians, but they're there somewhere. Okay. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I get around the bus, and there's this like guy in a suit, skinny, tall, white dude with glasses. And he's like, Hey, how you doing? I'm like, this motherfucker. I already knew, I already <laughs> smelt the politician on his ass. Like, I haven't seen this motherfucker in this neighborhood ever. And he's like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm running for this or Senate mm. or some shit or whatever. And, uh, I don't know, but he was like, uh, uh I shook his hand. He's like, yeah, I'm running for this. I'd like to get your vote. Da, 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 da. What kind of change around the city? I was like, you know what, man? And I was not into politics. This is when I like put politics on the shelf. I was like, you know what, man? Like, I'll be honest. I've never seen you in this neighborhood. I don't know who you are. And I think you're just here because you're, you're trying to get votes mm -hmm. and that's fine and dandy, but I think it's weird. You that, getting mine, bitch. Yeah. It's just weird. I don't know. I don't know how else they would get votes, but it's just weird that you don't see a guy in a neighborhood that's not popular. And all of a sudden right. when it's election time, Hey, look, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I Chasing I babies and shit in front of a mini mart in a corner is not his area. It was not mm -hmm. his scene, but uh, anyways, he has a nickname, Mr. HIV lover, because in 2017, uh, within the Senate, I guess they call him that, because in 2017, he co-authored a bill, bill number 239, which lowered penalty for exposing someone to HIV. So if you were dating someone, they had HIV, they had to tell you it was a felony. Mm. They gave it to you. Okay. He dropped it down to a misdemeanor. Wow. And he's part of the, Now I'm going to give. Uh, what the fuck's up with this guy? So I'm going to give a little of his defense, although I still think it's creepy as fuck. But he. Um, <laughs> He's part of the LGBTQ community. He's gay, I believe. Okay. And um, uh, so how the law stands now, I don't know about the years. I don't think it's 10 years, but it's uh, 
if you have vaginal sex with a minor, it's statutory rape. If they're both straight, right? If it's a 19 year old and an 18 year old that has, um, I might actually wrote through something. Okay. If it's a straight 19 year old and 17 year old who are dating, whatever, and they have consensual sex, the judge, although it's statutory rape, the judge does not forcibly have to put the 19 year old boy on the sex registry uh, list. But still, he could, but he doesn't have to. Mm. But if it's if it's non consensual or if it's consensual. if it's consensual, okay. If, if it's non consensual, still rape. But if the 19, 17 year old are gay, say it's two gay guys, it, if it's um, anal or oral sex, it's automatic. The judge has to put them on the registry list. Mm. So he's saying it's discriminatory. And that's why he's changing that everyone's taking this this um, thing and blowing it up because he's getting death threats. You should see all okay. the news stations. Like, it's been Ooh, crazy. I, I posted something on Facebook last night, and there was a nice heated battle on it. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I got I called was... QAnon already or something. I was like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't even know. I was like, are they? So I, I was like, oh, I guess they're running with it, too. What? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but well, it's, it sounds like that's that sounds right. You that know? sounds right. But the 10 fucking but, years is yeah, what. So when he says this defense, he doesn't even mention the 10 years. And the girl that, you know, I like her, whoever attacked me on Facebook, but why aren't you mentioning the, ten, like, cause I am for that. Yeah. Let's get it right. And right. I've, I've talked about this with uh, people before. I don't know if it's on this podcast that it is weird that a 19 year old and a 17 year old could have sex and he's a rapist and he has to, his whole life will be fucked up jobs, everything mm -hmm. live near a school, right? Megan's list or is it Megan's list? But like, <laughs> I, think so. I don't know. Or like all this, the you pedophiles, the pedophiles yeah, yeah, in your right. area, but at the same time, why is it 10 years? I am for two years. I was always saying, I've thought about this many, many years. I think two years is a good stance. You know, that's like a good like barrier where like, you know, these stupid kids or, right. you know, like, but like, how is it going to be rape if there's only a year apart? But 10 fucking years of 14 and 24 year old is fucking wrong in my opinion. Dude, that's so wrong. Although, you know what, man, as unfortunate as it is, I know a 14, I don't know her, but I know the person that told me is related to her 14 year old pregnant mm -hmm. in the central Valley right now. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's been going on forever. <laughs> well, yeah, that's been going on forever, but yeah. When you hear, you know, cause I'm just having a conversation with the guys like, Oh, how so-and-so, how so-and-so, how so-and-so. Oh yeah. yeah. Her daughter's pregnant. I'm like, oh. her daughter. What the fuck? Is her daughter a kid? And she's like, yeah, she's 14 years old. How old is the guy? So what? I didn't even ask. Yeah. I don't want to go down I, that fuck, road. I didn't even want to go there, yeah, but right. dude, it's like, I have a 12 year old daughter. Yeah. And it's like, no way, man, that this is, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. And if you want to get more on it, this kid did a great breakdown. He talks about, he's a young kid from Georgia. His, his YouTube name is Momentum. I just came across him. He doesn't have a huge following, but man, it, I watched a bunch of breakdowns, but his is very clear and he's very young, but he was like um, explaining how they use this confusing language to slip in things like, like, come on, not more than 10 years older, not more than 10. That's like a, those math uh, tests you used to take in high school. They started tricky. Like, <laughs> right. what? come on. Always. Like, if you go to a, a, a website to buy something, it's clear as day English. Why yeah. isn't this? Right. That's Makes exactly why. Yeah. No, that's exactly why. And that's, yeah. dude, that goes with everything. All these bills, it, it's in laws. It's due. When you go to the ballot and you vote, like, if you didn't research that before you went to the ballot, because the ballot just gives you a little yeah. fucking paragraph description of what's going on. You don't know what the fuck that yeah. means. And so, dude, every time that I voted, which is not very many times, you know, maybe a half a dozen times in my life, is like I make sure to read that fucking booklet that they send out, you know, and then do some online research yeah. and just – because that's what they fucking do, man. Well, no, like put something like actually the paragraph before this was the actual paragraph, but there's a paragraph before it that was like made it seem like it was a good bill. It's like, oh, this is not bad. What the fuck? And I read this like, what the fuck? Why is this not first? You know, yeah. it's just it, and then uh, the kid that breaks it down. I didn't read the full thing because it goes into like 104 CQ9 of last year da, 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 and all these. <laughs> notes, and it's just like he said, dude, you'll fall asleep. I read through it multiple times. Right. It's gibberish. Like it means something, but it's it's hard to get through. And, um, but yeah, check out momentum, fucking a uh, cool ass little kid doing this shit. Interesting. Dude, breaking yeah. it down. Well, and you know what, man, this is, uh, this is what I love about the new generation. And uh, although, you know, you know, there's a lot that goes on about laziness and entitlement and, you know, new generation, they're smart, as new gen fuck. They're smart as fuck, yeah. dude. And they know how to manipulate the internet and they know how to access things. And they're very savvy in social uh issues i think and yeah. you know i mean they're the ones that brought about the green movement right i mean the only reason that the green movement and electric cars and fucking eco-friendly and all yeah. this shit is is big is because 
the new generation came up and said, I ain't going to buy that shit. Yeah. You know? And so then, of course, billionaires are like, well, okay, we've got to change our mind. we got to go green because that's what they're buying. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I feel two ways about these. I heard a song the other day talking about like, like you're young, so they don't believe you or think you know anything. And I have, I have two sides. Like, yeah, young people are a part of this globe and they will inherit this globe, so they should have a say. But when I think, and this is just me personally, when I think of my life, how I thought when I was young, I didn't. I thought I was doing research, but I wasn't really. Right. It was kind of just easily placed on a plate for me. I was like, mm, yummy. But I wasn't <laughs> looking under the plate and like going back to the kitchen, like, who's making this? And what's the ingredients, <laughs> fucker? You know, Good like. Good analogy, Jay. Yeah, but it's like, that just came off the top, bro. But yeah. it's like, um, yeah, so I worry about that because I would have started a revolution if I was 17, 18, dude. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, without knowing much. So that part I wonder. And I don't know, because it's hard. It's hard to say because everyone should have a say. But man, when you're young, you're easily manipulated. That's why this this fucking bill's crazy to me. A 14 year old is the fuck they're doing. How are they are gonna give consent? Dude, seriously, man. And that's you know, and uh, see, that's the hard part for me. Even a 17 and a 19, like because you see that a lot, especially growing up. We knew girls in high school that were dating older men. You know, oh, all of them. <laughs> and yeah, right. And, and so it's like, okay, well, if their parents are cool with it, you know, and everyone's cool with it, like what the fuck, whatever. Yeah. You know, do your thing. Yeah. Uh, so. It's hard to decipher that, right? Because it's like, okay, well, then, uh, you know, then they break up and the parents like, oh, fuck that. We're going to press charges. Like, it's not fair. It's yeah. not fair. Yeah. Right. So how does that work? You know, I would say, though, that the HIV thing, that's fucked up, man. Yeah, I never heard of that. <clears throat> and, um, I've never heard of that either. Uh, you know, that's, there was a f- good portion of years when Trump and Hillary were running that I had to just check out because I was so sick of it. And I remember Obama years was like it. And but now I, I want to stay in tune. I don't know why. Maybe because we have a podcast. You know, I don't know, but like, um, I feel better knowing these things for some reason. It makes you a little crazy. Don't get me wrong, right. but it's good to fucking not see the headline always. And yeah. I feel like you're going to see that no matter if you're, oh, you always will. Yeah. But sometimes I felt it was best not to have an opinion, but as I get older and think about having a family, I want an opinion and right. I want to make sure that opinion is sound. I don't want to be tricked with funky language or f- people on Facebook trying to pressure you to go one way or whatever. And a majority of those people on Facebook didn't do any reading. Yeah, I doubt it. You know, you, man, you'll be surprised. There's some smart motherfuckers out there. And I think the younger generation's getting good about, mm-hmm. I think it's common knowledge. The news is bullshit now where we kind of were like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, probably. Right. But like, they're like, no, fuck that. Like we got to do deep dives. Like this mm-hmm. kid was younger in this bill, like some kid in Georgia. Interesting. You know? And, um, but, uh, Hey, segue from Georgia. Do you hear about operation not forgotten? No. Uh, it's, a. Uh, uh, U.S. Marshals worked with local and state agencies, and uh, they rescued 26 missing children, I think four days ago, maybe six, mm. six seven days ago when this comes out, res- rescued 26 missing children, and I don't know what this means, but had a safe location of 13 others in Georgia. And then... Oh, yeah, from an apartment bill or like a structure or something? Yeah, and they, I guess they arrested nine people and then had 26 arrest warrants cleared. Not sure 26 arrest warrants cleared me neither, but they arrested yeah. nine people. But um, then in Ohio after that, and within 20 days, they located 25 missing children. That was called Operation Safety Net. Wow. Why aren't we hearing about that? Right. Exactly. This should be blowing up. I saw someone share it, like share this if I, you want to give them a plot. And I shared it. I researched it, then shared it. But I was like, what the fuck? So what? what I mean, so what's going on? Why are we talking about COVID right now? Exactly. Who were the who were the kids? Where where they? I don't know. They just said they're at uh, high risk areas, like at risk. I don't know if that's like poor neighborhoods or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they said they were like very at risk, and um, they like personally were there to make sure they wasn't just like through like oh we found this kid. Like they the marshals actually had to make physical contact. Okay. Uh, to make sure. And that, so did they locate family or or did it get in depth like that? Uh, I didn't dig enough into it. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's out there. But what I looked was very kind of brief over it. I don't know if there's. I feel like they're probably doing mass operations right now. Well, dude, because you you read a lot. Well, I read a lot about, and this is you know several months ago when you know they're locking kids in cages and yeah. separating families at the border, like. Thousands of fucking kids, man, yeah. being separated from their families, probably never going to see them again. Their families are getting deported. Now they're, yeah. and then, you know, then they come out with the federal government lost like 2,400 kids. They don't even oh, really? know where they're at. Yeah. Like, oh. And, and so you think, like, where the fuck did they go? That That's where they are in some fucking weirdos fucking apartment. Or these are American kids too. Like a lot of like 800,000 go miss a year too. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Yeah, but right. like, yeah, going kind of on the kids in cages, it's um, uh, it's weird. Like, have you first of all, like, 
more than one president has been doing this shit. Oh, right. <laughs> Obama got the cages built. Trump filled them, I guess. But have you seen that video? I saw on Joe Rogan. There, I mentioned Joe Rogan. But uh, I'm going to mention him <laughs> later, too. But he, um, about Mike, I never saw this video. It was creepy. And Joe Rogan broke it down how creepy it was that Mike Pence, like, walked, visited that border center or whatever. And, like, there was this huge cage with tons of people back there, adults, kids, whatever. And he, like, walked in. And he just kind of, like, you could tell you don't want to look at him. And it was just weird because he was, Joe Rogan broke it down. I was like, like you're crossing this country or whatever, you're trying to make a better life for yourself. You hate your fucking, whatever you're there in a cage now. And you see the second most powerful guy in this most powerful country. And he comes in, he's just sitting there looking around, you know, it's just creepy. It's yeah. like a, like an old picture you would see in a book, you know, from like the 1800s. Right. It was just, um, it, it is, crazy. it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Oh, it's a horrible. Look. I don't know what the answer is. Just let everyone in. I don't know. Well, see, and that, yeah, it's it's a fine line. Yeah, we can't I even agree. take care of our own right now. I agree. No, I, I agree. I don't know man. what the it's, answer is. Yeah, I don't know what the answer is either. And you know, I mean, these people are fleeing. I mean, real life uh, dangers. You yeah. know, and uh, you know, we've always had refugees from all kinds of countries. You know, I mean, countries go to war, and and not only do refugees come to America, but refugees go everywhere, right? Yeah. And so we've always had this. So it's like. Why don't we have a plan, you know, or why don't we have some something better than this? Right. And, and then then COVID hit and you hear all these fucking stories about women being raped in these camps and mm-hmm. kids dying and uh, COVID fucking getting spread like crazy. And it's like we can do better, I think, you know, and, and I don't know what the answer is either, but it just feels like first world country, most powerful country in the world. We can do a little better than that, I think. But going back to the kids, man, I mean, this is this is real life, man. Kids are going missing. And I, I think we talked about this. Maybe we talked about this on the podcast on episode number 21. I'm not sure. But I, I was a little drunk that day. <laughs> I was blacked out. Half that episode. <laughs> You're welcome. But uh, you know what? It's, it's like, um, what do we do about missing organs, right? So if I, so if I have a heart failure... Mm-hmm. I have to go to the hospital, register on a list and say, okay, well, hopefully the fucking heart with my blood type comes in the next fucking six months or I'm dead, right? If a rich and powerful person, like fucking, I don't know, someone of the elite fucking family or something yeah. gets a heart problem and they need a heart of a certain stature, they're going to fucking get it. And whether that's some heart that's already frozen in a freezer waiting to be transplanted or it's like okay let's locate a kid in one of these camps that has this fucking type blood and let's do away with them and now you have a fucking 16 year old heart um that should sound crazy uh i watched joe rogan episode 1255 the return of alex jones and uh Mm. and he talked about this there was a kentucky senator that went on radio and talked about like when they're having abortions, there's like a certain, it's like this fucking whiner fucking bill. It's fucking confusing, but there's this like, where like they have abortion, but if the baby is still living, once they take it out, like they didn't board it inside, but you know, that weird, I don't know, I don't know enough, but like pull it out that technically they could take it to an area and like keep it alive. Raise it. Wow. And this, and it's um, when you hear the guy say it, Oh, that doesn't sound horrible. But when you really think about what he's saying, and then you like, here and Alex Jones, like, dude, they're backing up vans and those motherfuckers, you know, and harvesting these organs and shit. And so I don't know if it's true or not, but like Joe Rogan looked it up. They're all stoned and drunk, but he's like, it looks to be, man, I thought that was crazy, but you seem to be right. I'm just something. And uh, by the way, we got to watch that podcast. It's my favorite podcast in the history of podcast four hours with Alex Jones return. The, the first one's good, but the second one, I think it broke the internet record. When, when was this? Uh, well, I, mean, I played a clip for it. Remember we started watching yeah, it and I right. want to do like a stream where we watch it because I Man, smoke a joint, drink to that. It's funny. Let's do it. Let's it's do funny. It. Eddie Bravo and Alex Jones and Joe Rogan. Yeah, interesting, man. So, but it's it does seem out there. But I mean, when you take everything into consideration and how powerful these motherfuckers are, and and you know what they do at the Bohemian Grove or wherever these fucking underground societies are, like. Well, I think it's steps, right? It's by the way, Jorgen the other day was talking about Bohemian Grove as a no clip. Shit. I was like, fucking killed it. He's, He's been like, watching our shit, Jay. Probably motherfucker. Joe, don't be fucking stealing our shit, Give bro. Give us a mil at least. You can steal everything. <laughs> Two mil. We want wait, <laughs> taxes, four mil. There you go. Right, right. So each of us at least get a mil. Thank you, but Joe. uh but uh um yeah, I, I think people really need to go back in history because history repeats itself. And I know we think we're egomaniacs and we think this is the future. We're going to have flying cars soon and Tesla and, and we're special. And I don't think the galaxy looks at us as fucking special. And I think history repeats itself over and over. Yes. Things do change for the better. Um, But if you think about it, things start small, 
there's a bill where a 14 year old and 24 year old could fuck. Then there's a, a baby. If it's not aborted, the parent doesn't have to be notified that's still living. Yeah. Um, they agree to the abortion. Um, you know, it, it starts like that and that becomes normalized and this becomes normalized. And next thing you know, fucking Hitler's at your fucking front door. You know, <laughs> hey, you know what? It's funny that you mentioned that, Jay, because I was just uh, reading an article last night, actually. And it was something out there, but I read it only because I was thinking about that the other day. Like, you know, how does this start? Right. Because it's like, you know, I mean, I I hate both sides, too, but it seems like. Uh, you know, um, what's the word? Author authoritarian. authoritarian. Yeah, it, it seems like we're heading in that direction, right? We have, uh, you know, and, and actually the article on both sides, on both sides, Scary. right? And so they were talking about the extremes, the extremes on both sides, right? And it's like, it's like other countries, it's like ISIS, it's like how these extreme groups form, and it's like it, it was just steps. It was steps, mm -hmm. and it and it gave these people the the mindset that yeah, I can go out there and do this, and they're not gonna do shit about it. So I'm just gonna go and do it, right? Like Portland, right? They're fucking, they're gonna go and take over a police department. No one's gonna do shit about it. So they're gonna do it. It's like the extreme right. Like yeah, I'm gonna go fucking take a machine gun and go shoot a bunch of protesters, and they're not gonna do shit about it. So the, the next step, and the next step, and the next step. Shit, by the time we know, we're fucking no rights, you know, or who knows? Who knows where we're gonna be? Well, there's like got me thinking though. There was this huge caravan. Um, you should definitely look into the Russian communism taking over, especially within mm. Ukraine. But there's this huge uh, Trump caravan that drove into Portland this week. Mm. I think or last week. I think it was this week. And uh, um, and they came like trucks, loads of people wow. from out, outworks were like, you're talking about coming to our place? We'll come to you. Wow. And 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 everyone's like, this is a tragedy. And they came with pepper spray. So if you stood in front of the car, they would pepper spray you. They all had Trump flags. Mm. And uh, Trump supporter got shot. Um Got, got killed and uh, uh, there's a video of it. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, mm. apparently he got shot and that his friend did an interview about it. But, uh, oh, I don't know why people are fucking surprised by this. When you have one side, I don't give a fuck what their favorite color is, <laughs> red or blue, but if you have one fucking side that is cause doing violence in the street and writing and mirrors are turning the other way because it's under their flag color. You don't think the other, you think the other side, what, what the other side is going to chill the fuck out? Right. When you're saying, hey, we're going to come after your homes after this, you're going to get you're going to get what you're doing. Violence on both sides. And that's a civil war. And that needs to stop. I, I don't think there should be violence anywhere, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a policeman, whether it's a fucking fucking kid with a gun on the street. Like it's just it never works. It never fucking works. Violence. <laughs> thank you. Or one watcher. <laughs> violence breeds fucking violence. And if you are, are promoting fucking, and this is why I have prompt BLM, Nick, and I, I know we, we disagree with this sometimes, but it turned into something that, and I, I remember before we went to BLM on our podcast, I rewatched it the other day. I said, you said, would you ever like go to BLM? And I was like, ah, you know, cause I was for it. And I was like, yeah, of course I'm a black lives matter. I'm well, I get it. Yeah, I'm for that. You know? And, but I was like, I don't like to be a part of groups because big, I've never liked to, mm -hmm. I never protest. I never in San Francisco that are every week and I never did them. And I got criticized for it because I feel like when you march with a group of people, you don't know all those people mm -hmm. and you don't know the leaders of those people right. and you don't know who's behind the curtains would be of those leaders. And this, and I marched at BLM and I regret it. Yeah. I don't regret yelling George Floyd and da, 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 whatever, but good God almighty, the, 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 what they're preaching now, I just don't agree with. And I, I just gotta be honest, communism, Marxism, uh, talk about, look at history. It's scary because that could be our kids reality. I don't want to have kids in that fucking environment. Cause if I look at a history book, I'm nervous. Yeah, right. And I, you know, and I, I don't, I don't look into it that far. Um, usually, especially with like the Black Lives Matter thing. I, and I, but I have heard that. I have heard, you know, some things about the the inner workings of the movement and stuff like that. And I, I think I go beyond the movement, you know, because I agree. You know, when you get into something, and there's always people that are fucked up, and there's always somebody that's going to use it to their advantage to to benefit themselves yeah. and their groups somehow, which is unfortunate because then how else are we going to get movements, right? Because that's what we always say, right? We, we see movements in the past and what they've done and, and even the Black Panther Party and, and not only what they did on, on a political level, but on a ground and local level, you know, helping the people and, yeah. and pregnancy women and, and all this stuff. And so you say, like, how can we have a movement if everything that fucking every time a movement happens, something infiltrates it and corrupts the shit out mm -hmm. of it and then it's fucked right yeah i don't know what the answer you know occupy had a cool thing if you remember yeah they didn't have a leader right. mm -hmm. they didn't have a leader 
-hmm. So they couldn't, you know, the thing was they can't cut the head off the snake. You know, that's what you do, right? Mm -hmm. Like they always say, cut the head off the snake yeah, right. and the rest will fall. But they had no head of the snake. Uh, you know, there's its own internal problems. Um, Occupy's still out there, you know. It never um, got violent, though, did it? I mean, no, there was well, a lot of sit-ins and shit like that. A lot of hacking and stuff. Yeah, but, um, right. No, I don't think it ever got violent. I'm sure some small outliers, but sure. like um, I'm all for nonviolent protests, but it is hard. Like what if, what if it is a Batista or a Fidel Castro or a, a Donald Trump or a fucking Gavin Newsom? Like, but when do you, what, what do they have to do where you're like, Oh, I think I need to raise a gun. You know, um, right. I don't know the answer to that. I wish I did. But um, all I know is what I'm seeing going on is, is it's, it's, going to be met with another force and it's going to be ugly I and agree, i'm sad for both sides i dude i i feel you man yeah. I, i'm right there with you jay because i feel the same way man it's it's just it's fucked up you know yeah. it's unfortunate that it, it will become a civil war yeah unfortunately and that that's how i see it and it's it's two extremes uh that are both being touted to do it you yeah. know it's, it's like they're both of those teams are like yeah hooray go do it you know and, and it's like Fuck, man. What the fuck is going on? Well, here? the people behind the scenes are not going to get hurt. Shit, if their side oh, loses, course, they got right. a million houses in other countries they will go to. Exactly. And that's why I think we're fucking pawns and war pigs. My we're favorite bulls. song by Black Sabbath, War Pigs. You mm. know, it talks about the why do the poor fight the wars, you know, and Ozzy Osbourne, shut up. But, uh, you know, it's, it, we're stupid. All of us are stupid. I get it. It's, there's fucking crime in the street stuff, but let's get smarter. Mm -hmm. Let's be a little more intelligent. Um, communism uh and marxism um i remember i was tripping when we had dr odin he mentioned it and i have the communist book of course you know i'm interested in stuff like that um not i don't think it, i wouldn't want to live in a country like that but i i like to be aware of other governments other religions blah 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 so i pick up books and i'm in those countries and mm -hmm. i picked up the mao book and he mentioned it and uh it kind of turned me off guard because i was like oh i didn't realize black panther was connected to that. that's cool whatever but uh he was pr kind of a little preachy about it to me and i was like hmm whoa, this is weird. And then uh, I've heard you talk about it a little bit. And then I was like, whoa. And I was like, man, I wonder if that's like a sex state thing. And then I started going online and going, no, this is like a real big like left thing now. Because I remember back in the day um, in San Francisco, I'd see like communist flags, like whatever dork, good luck with that. Like two dudes. <laughs> but uh, it's getting more popular. And it, that, I, that's why I think I'm so interested in pol politics right now a little bit. Not like I'm desperately interested, but like, you know, it's, uh, Jordan Peterson did a breakdown of the with an Australian guy about the dangers of neo neo communism um, or whatever they called it. You know, they always add a, a fucking word in there. You could call right. it free capitalism, whatever. They, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, not ne ne neo communism. Did I say Nazism? I don't no, know. I think communism. Neo communism. Okay, and neo Nazism. So that's a word that's in my head all the time because everyone talks about it. But uh, it. Um, he talked about um, very smart dudes. I don't know the Australian guy, but he's bright too. And Australia is pretty left right now. And uh, um, they were talking about how it starts with like free speech, you know, mm -hmm. and it goes. And they were talking about Russia when they the communists took over, which uh, was great for Russia until the USSR broke down. And, and he was saying, I don't know why we want to go back down this road in history where it went down and realized what worked and what didn't. Not saying this is perfect, but saying, fuck, it could be a lot worse. And he was talking about uh russia coming in, i think particularly ukraine at the time that was part of russia mm -hmm. not anymore but um they they had a they had um the communists took over and they had a few farmers in ukraine that um are doing well they they developed it they got going they were the breadbasket of europe at the time were known to 1920s and uh they would feed europe you know because they had all these great wheat farms okay. and shit. well um there's a lot of people doing bad just because fucking life sucks for people sometimes maybe you're a black kid in in today's society you know right. sometimes it fuck fuck it just life is fucking mean or you have a bad run you know life so you have those people but then you have people that have never done a shit in their life and we know those people too where they just coast and hope something's gonna land on their plate and right. if it doesn't they're like <laughs> fuck i'll go steal or something um the guys that don't put much effort into sure. making sure they're they're safe their safety um well the Communist Party went to those people first mm. and said, Hey, you know those motherfuckers over there at the farms and the house and shit that make got money going, da 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 da. Uh, you deserve that too. You deserve mm. that too. They took that from you. Separation, baby. Yeah. And so then they go oh, fucking assholes and they get drunk one night and they go over there and they fucking burn the farms. And now you 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 know, Ukraine doesn't produce much food. Fucked. Yeah. And that's what they said. Then in the end, everyone's fucked. The people that work hard and the people that don't want to work hard and right. the people stuck in between that mm -hmm. just have a bad trip everyone fails and the USSR breaks up and we all know how that went much right. of death. So they, it's, it's very easy to go to that group of people and be like, mm. Hey, see those guys doing good. Right. Fuck them. Now mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. There was definitely corruption with people doing good that are making sure they 
could step on other people. Sure. Um, but at the end of the day, that's why personally communism scares me just because of history. Doesn't it sound like that's what's going on here right now? Like, doesn't it seem like today? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, more with like the left saying that we want to take your fucking suburbia and your well, homes. That too. And the right saying, you know, it's, it's okay. We're not going to obviously do anything if you go and shoot up this person or what we well, keep, you said that earlier. I didn't well, know no, that. Like the kid is what I'm referring the to. The 17 year old, the 17 year old kid. Oh, that was self-defense in my eyes. You think so? Oh yeah, I think that uh, we talked about. I don't know if you're drunk. We talked about last podcast. Drunk. Yeah, I noticed you didn't say too much. Or was pretty woke on it, but uh, kid, don't be there with a the gun. Don't be a fucking idiot. If you gotta, if you gotta fuck, don't just don't take guns to these fucking protests. If you're gonna take a gun, you might as well just stay home because you're. It's just not gonna end good, or the chances are increased of you or someone else being hurt. Don't fucking. If you're a fucking guy in the protest, don't bring a fucking gun. Mm -hmm. Uh, but up until that point, wrong. And to the point where the crowd was chasing him, I don't know if you watched the full clip yet. Video. Never I watched any time. of the clips. Well, if you watch the full one, it's a lot. It, it's a lot different than what the news showed. They cut out the first part. But mm -hmm. uh, the kid was running. He had a, a malt. Uh, I always mess up. Molotov cocktail mm -hmm. thrown at him. He had guys yelling, beat his ass. I think he just shot someone that was breaking into a building. Right. Um, and and another guy hit him with a skateboard. He got kicked in the face. He got hit in the back of the head. Fell down. And then he got a handgun pulled on him. And he shot three people. Mm -hmm. I say that self-defense. Well, he's the one that shot somebody first. Yeah. So, so if I saw somebody shoot someone else, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't go there. I would. I have kids and a wife. I'm yeah. Like, Fuck that. I'm going home. Well, I don't have kids and a wife, and I wouldn't do that. But 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 if I seen someone do that, mm -hmm. and let's just say I didn't have kids and a wife, I would want to stop that person from doing that. Yeah. It's like, why did you just shoot that guy? Yeah, I'm going to hit you with my skateboard now. But, but go look at the criminal charges of the people doing that to him. But I heard those are bogus. Uh, well, we all hear and, something, but we could look it up, can't we? Yeah, right. We can look it up. Right. Well, and, and you know what? And at the same time, he didn't know anything about that, right? So it's not like he's like, oh, that guy's a pedophile. Bah, bah, bah. No, he's thinking a crowd. He's running towards the cops. He's thinking a crowd. He was getting a medic for a protest earlier. Nine, ten, obviously, the kid has some fucking issues. Right. He's down there with the gun at 17 in the mm -hmm. first place. Um, his mom has issues. Also, too. he's thinking he's going to, well, we, maybe. We don't know. Well, his mom dropped him off. Oh, did she? Yeah. I thought he took a bus or something. No, I heard that his mom oh. dropped him off. Maybe. Well, obviously, his parents, I don't know. I think it does come down to parents of most when some people say, oh, the kid did a crime. I go, I think it starts in the household. Oh, of course. You know, but uh, yeah, kid was wrong. Shouldn't have been there. Uh, the other kid with the gun should have been there. Or the guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know his kid. I got the skateboard. What the fuck are you doing with the skateboard? We, we've seen skateboard use. Like, I don't know how this is going to fix anything for anybody. Um, if I'm being chased by a crowd, like we talked about this on the podcast, I, I guess you don't remember, but, uh, I said, you know, kids wrong, guilty up until the point he's running away from people and they're chasing him with guns, sticks and stuff. And, um, he's trying to be cool with these people. I don't know. Well, what did he expect going in there with a the fucking machine gun? Well, what right? does the did other guy have a handgun for? He's cool. You don't go after him. Why are you so concerned with the seven year old, but not the guy with the handgun? Right. Well, I don't know anything about the guy with the handgun. But why not? Don't you know, you know about the seven year old, but well, not the I think, with the handgun. I think anyone's allowed to have a gun. I think, yeah. In a I mean, protest? No, no. Well, I mean, just in general. Like, like yeah. if you have a gun, and there's probably many people with guns there. Because, yeah, for sure. To be honest, I, I probably wouldn't go unless yeah. I had a gun, you know, because I want to protect myself. But I, you know what? I just think that th – see, this is this is what I think happened. And then, again, I, I didn't watch the video. I watched a little – the clip of the video and, and maybe some pictures and stuff. But it seems like when you have people that are talking about – Killing like and, and mostly about like uh, the RNC, the lady who had the little pistol who went and had the speech at the RNC. You know what I'm talking about? I know the couple that were were outside. Yeah, the yeah, big that gun. couple. They right, didn't have right. a small. They had a big gun. Well, he had a big gun. She had a handgun. Yeah. So she spoke at the Take RNC. That wife get a small gun. <laughs> but it was a it was a well, like a 38 special or something like that. Oh, that's that's a nice gun. That's a nice gun. Also small. My bad. And uh, you know, but she had a speech, and it was basically like. We are going to be in control. Don't let them control you. Don't be fooled by the media. You know, we have the power. We're going to do this and this and that. And, and you know, it seems like if you're going to allow that to be a, a representative of, of who you are as, as a group, then what you're saying is, yes, all you people who feel this way do what you feel is right. And if you feel like going to these protests with machine guns and protecting. Well, wait, are we talking about the 17 year old kid or the couple? Well, I'm talking about the couple. Because the couple was outside their house. Yeah, right. They were not a protest. Protest came to their house. Yeah, the protest came to their house. Which? So, so whose fault is that? No, if someone came to my house, I'm pulling out my gun. Well, it's the 17 year old's fault to go to a protest with a gun. Or I agree. But it's also the protest's fault for going to people's house and, like, and we know they got, like, we're going to fucking right. take your shit. Well, in Seattle, they're saying, get out of your house and give it to me. See, that's crazy. See, I don't agree with that. Do you know about the 2000? Ah, okay. I, 
I don't, <laughs> but you know, like 2015, one of the BLM leaders led a list. If you're white and don't have kids, give it to a black family. If you're a white woman and uh, you can look it up, uh, mm. if you're a white woman and you, uh, she even said small dick, something like rat out your small dick, white men or the racist white men, da, da. you know, and it's like, it's very forceful. So that's why I'm saying like force breeds force. Oh, right. And so the 70 year old kids shouldn't have been there. Uh, the mob shouldn't have chased him. The fucking, uh, the, the fucking, um, um, I don't know if he did shoot someone. I, I want to say he did. See, the, yeah, video, that's what I heard. the video didn't cut that. I heard he s s saw someone breaking into a building and he said, stop. They didn't stop and he shot him. And that group's friends. I also heard his crack hits. I don't know if that's true. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, uh, the video, all I know is that's all that I'm taking him. The right. full video, which is hard to find now. But uh, um, but if a pro, if, if some, like you said, yeah, if someone comes to my house and they're seem violent. Oh, I'm being prepared oh, hell because yeah, there's too. a big group of people and I can't fight everybody. And I don't agree with that kind of yeah. shit. You know, even when we talked about it a couple podcasts ago where they went to a mayor's house, I think it was New York or something Air like too, that. There too, in Sacramento. Was Oh, yeah, yeah, they did come. Not the mayor's house. house. It was someone else, right? Yeah, it was The mayor was else. trying to be cool. Who was it? I, I forgot it's what like, it was. But, but even that, it's like, you know what? Go protest. Do your thing. And you know what? To be honest infrastructure and stuff like that i don't give a fuck about that shit you know if it burns down that does not bother me one why bit. not uh, because why 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 would it i mean they have insurance so that's going to be taken what if they care don't have what if they're barely making ends meet businesses aren't rolling in millions of dollars especially mom and pops oh of course. you should know this no of course but every business has to have insurance. so what if can they can they fucking burn down your fucking van and you're cool with it i would just report it to my insurance and but get you're it cool all with back. it but you're like that's okay go ahead well i would be because you could give your address it. out right now <laughs> yeah well i mean i would be upset about it obviously and you know and i'm not saying go do it right i'm not saying that's the way to do it yeah. but historically speaking that's how you get your point across. That's, you know, fuck the Indian guy who lit himself on fire, right? Like, who would do that? Who? Remember that, well, it's like a monk who lit himself on fire? Vietnamese. Oh, Vietnamese? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Vietnam okay. War, not Indian. Well, I mean, Sorry. that's extreme, right? I mean, who would fucking do that? But he did that to, to show a national... To, but completely different. Buddhists don't believe in violence, first off. Second off, he took his own life, took no one else's life to prove that point. Well, right, but it's but it's okay, not comparable yeah. as burning down Kmart. You're right, you're right. It's it's really yeah. not. But it's it's what I'm talking about is extreme things like that to get national attention, right? To show you that hey, but who other really a fucking problem who's here. other attention are you getting? A 17 year old white kid with a gun? Yeah, you're that's right. what I'm saying. That's no, what I'm you're saying. Right. I don't know where it ends. Yeah, violence ends with violence. And first of all, black fucking businesses are being destroyed, and no one gives a fuck. This is true too. So the black and black people, by the way, there's something cool in Georgia um, with like um, a Oh, what was it like? Nineteen black families chipped in and bought a big plot of land in Georgia. Oh, yeah, I see because uh, like Killer that. Mike talked about a lot. That's what if you want black wealth, black people need to buy land and generational wealth. Give mm -hmm. it down generation. Uh, Jay Z preaches that a lot. But um, but when these not people, as easy as it sounds. Not as easy. Fuck, I don't have land either. Shit, dude. <laughs> right. But like, it's like um, uh, it's it's like fucking a black person got got a piece of property put a business on there and they're fucking doing good. And they're going to pass that down to their kids, their kids, and they're trying to do it. And then gets burnt down in one night. Yeah. That's tough because of black lives matter. So what, who's black lives matter? Who? Yeah. Right. I, I just, that's what groups are fucking confused. I get it. No, I, get I get it. That part too. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, talking about that and actually reading, uh, you know, some, some stuff about reparations when I was in college and, and what that looks like. It's like, uh, Tallahassee Holtz, uh, or Tallahassee Coates writes about something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I looked him up. You talked about him before. Yeah, yeah. And and you know what? I honestly feel like what does reparations look like, right? Because it, it's been talked about and, and, you know, how does that work and what, you know, who is owed what? And, and you know, you can trace generations and, and you know, this kind of thing. But 40 acres for, and a mule. For me, that's what it, dude, for me, that's what it seems like would, yeah. would be beneficial is like yeah. give some land to some people. And if you have to draw lineages and see, you know, who owes what and, and this kind of thing. Having land is is powerful, man. Yeah, and and it always goes up. You know what? I I think we talked about this too, and and I I think I got it from like a J Cole song or something. It's like segregation was almost more beneficial than integration, right? Because it's like we integrate, and it's like, well, I don't like you, and you don't like me, and fuck, but we have to live together. Whereas if you're segregated and you're in your own community, it's like, well, I support you, you support me, I support all these businesses, mm -hmm. and we're a community. I, I'm not sure how that works. So the know? KKK says. <laughs> They preach that. They're like, hey. we don't want to murder you guys. We just want to stay away from us. Mm. You know, but if you get close, we'll murder you. You know, that's like, but. Uh, yeah, well, there's the fine line there. I don't agree with that. I, I, well, you know, I don't know, Nick. You know, when you get older, you get either smarter or more evil. I can't tell. 
<laughs> like the butterflies leave, I guess. But um, but you know you know about the is it the Tulsa massacre? Mm-hmm. I think they might even make a show show about it. You know, um, right? Uh, where they had a, a very predominant black town yeah, the, the black stock market, right? Isn't that what that was? I don't know. It was a bunch of black businesses owned. It was like black town. It was like Atlanta yeah, right. back in the mm-hmm. day when, and it was like an Atlanta, you know, like a mm-hmm. big successful black city. And they came and just wiped the fuck out of it. Yeah. I believe it was the Tulsa massacre. I could be confusing my massacres, but that was wrong. That was wrong. So this is wrong too. That's how I feel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, it's tough. Yeah, it, it is tough. Man. There's Koreans, there's Filipinos, there's Mexicans, there's black people, there's black conservatives. There's, there's other people besides the left black lives matter community. Yeah. I and agree. I think, I don't know how that works. That's what makes it confusing, right? Well, and that's a good point too, Jay, because there's a lot of Mexicans that go through this shit. You're, you're right. I mean, every culture, and fuck Native Americans, goddamn. That's, you know, mm-hmm. let's not even go there because we know how they're treated, right? Mm-hmm. You're right, man. It, it's across the board. Violence is not the answer, in my opinion. I, I don't think violence is the answer. Um, and it's, fuck, man, it's getting scary. I think violence is only the answer in self-defense. And there's two things people will die for. Family and land. Mm. I think I'm more family. I, yeah. don't, I don't have land, so that's probably why. Maybe if I had land, I'm like, this is my generational wealth. Fuck. Yeah, that's how I get the right. Yoders out of the shit shovelers. <laughs> but uh, but um, it seems to be in history that those are two things people will fucking die for. I would die for my family. I would kill for my family. Yeah. Not sure I would do the same for land. Like, yeah. you know, I, I know it's- or If it's I had probably, a waterfall. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> nice little river. That, that makes a difference. Uh, you know, speaking of which, Jay, uh, and maybe we can go to a more brighter topic, but uh, dude- when we're in the Central Valley, does dude, would you ever own land out there? I would love to. I, dude, I was up there. We were at Kui. It's three rivers. If you want to Google it, check it out. It's fucking gorgeous, man. It, it's basically a stream of rivers that leads into a lake, Lake Kui, uh, that leads into Highway 98, 198. Yeah. Fuck, I would love to have some land up there, man. That would be so awesome. Yeah, I would love to have land where Kobe and his family live. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I think it's pretty out there, and it's still close, like, like a drive to Lindsay. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, it, Springville, there's a lot of pretty places. Some are pretty. I wouldn't want to like just have a house in Lindsay. Like, although that's cool. Like if you're doing a dope, but like, I, I want some country and some beautiful rolling hills or something. I, I want know. a river, river, a creek or river. A creek, would be sweet. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I would love that, man. Yeah. Or walk at least like a short drive mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. But, uh, right. Right. Yeah. Not a, not a, not like a, cause I remember in Tonyville, was it Tonyville? Not Tonyville. Uh, what's that one out there behind the high school? What's that little community called? Behind the high school? Yeah. Remember the, uh, it's like behind the high school to the north, not Tonyville. God damn it. I thought it was Tonyville. No, Tonyville is like way north. Huh, this know. one's right behind the high school. I, right, FFA uh, farm? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I don't want to give out names, but. Uh, someone lives. Yeah, yeah, where someone lives. Oh, there. like the Morenos? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What is that called? I, oh, there is a saying for it. I forget. Yeah, I, I forget know. what that's called. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. But anyways, they had a little creek that used to run through there. We used to go crawdad hunting all the time. Yeah. Me and Anthony Villarreal and, and I think Tony Mendez would go sometime. We were little kids. You know, we'd go catch crawdads. Yeah. Not that kind of river. I, I want a little more than that. But, you know, some rocks, some flowing water. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah. Water. Like, I think about this a lot. Like, I always want to live by the beach. I always picture, like, Central America. But, you know, uh, but then you're the white guy coming in, right? <laughs> but, dude, have you That's had thoughts of, like, dude, this – I've been having thoughts recently, and, and I've been talking to my wife about it and stuff, and it's it, it's getting scary, man. I think mm-hmm. it is getting scary, and it's like, man, if I was up there living on my own, it's like I don't know if I can live that life, you know, where I'm out, you know, in the outskirts boredom. by myself. Boredom, right? You know, you socializing and stuff. Oh, like you're going to be scared of the dark, bro. It's going to be super dark out there. <laughs> Dude, I am scared of the dark. Hell yeah. I know I would be fucking scared. But it's it's like, damn. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, it, it's, it's getting crazy. And I hope that after the elections and after COVID and all this shit, we can go back to somewhat fucking normalcy. I mean, that's – I don't know how that's going to work out, but <sighs> – I hope so. I hope this is just like the news, everyone wrapping shit up and fucking doing what they do in election year. But right. I, Donald Trump won in 2016 and Portland has fucking had problems ever since. And now it's all over the news. It, if you're following it, it was always around. It just exploded this time, but it exploded in 2016 too, but to, not to this scale. But um, if Biden wins, I truly believe the right will fucking eat, will fucking bitch and moan, but they'll fucking eat it eventually. Mm. If Trump wins again, I think that shit's gonna hit the fucking fan. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. And to be honest, I, I, I don't. I'm not saying that means who I want to win. Maybe it should. I don't know. But 
At the same time, maybe not. Maybe Biden wins the same shit happens. I don't fucking know. But all I know is it's fucking scary. And COVID and all this has made me realize I am unprepared. And I wish I didn't quit my job. Not kidding. But if I had the money, I would have definitely like try to get some some small shack somewhere, you know, and like right. get some guns, get some food, get some farming going, learn. I need to learn about that. Right, right. And you know what? I don't think it's going to get that extreme. And I, and I honestly think that it, the media blows it way the fuck yeah. up, right? I mean, these two extreme sides are a very small portion of society in general. But the scary thing is that, yeah, sorry, I cut you off. No, well, I, I think, I think, in my opinion, I think there's going to be some craziness. Whoever wins, whether yeah. Trump wins or Biden wins, I think people are going to bitch and moan on both sides. We'll have some conflict, and unfortunately, we'll probably have some serious conflict. I think, but it's like, okay, well, now we're over that. Now this is the president. Now we got to just kind of roll with the punches, type of thing. So I think we're going to have BS no matter who wins. But to be honest, I don't think it's that extreme, man. I, I think that. Again, you know, going back to like just walking around the neighborhood, like it is kind of tense, you know, but it's like, you know, that person's raising their family. That person's living a, you know, retired life, you know, this neighbor, that neighbor. They don't make the news. They don't make the news, right? Everybody's chilling. You know, we're all part of this world. And these two extreme groups are a little tiny fucking portion of these crazy motherfuckers. Well, yeah, and I agree. But the one thing I do would get fearful is that the news amps them up and the 17 year old feels like it's okay to go with a gun. The guy right. feels okay to break in the camera and burn down or the mom and pop shop on the corner. Right. Um, they feel like it's justified. And uh, that's what I, I guess I'm worried. And then it, it gains attention. Everyone's like, oh, we can just loot. Cool. We get some money. You know, fuck. You know, like, and, and me and I you agree. grew up doing some of that shit too. Yeah, so we hey, understand we how yeah. easy young people could just jump on that. Absolutely. It's, it, they don't go, like, at the end of the day, some, a lot of those people, I don't think give a fuck. They're just like, sweet fear yeah they don't care about blm they don't care about social injustices they they just yeah i think i i agree 100 or they know it on the surface level you know (laughs) yeah right right but yeah i mean if you're young and and you're already doing stupid shit and and yeah we and you did some stupid ass dumb shit shit. yeah and it's like oh here's an excuse to go and do some dumb shit yeah we didn't even need a protest we just did it (laughs) That's small town life, baby. Uh, oh man! But you know what? Okay, let's uh, let's change the subject here, Jay. We talked about this on the last pod, but I, I, you know, I didn't get too far into it, and I think it's, I think it's fucking humongous. I, I think it's huge, um, and I think it's not huge right now, but I think it very quickly it's going to get huge. Is the Neuralink man with with Elon Musk and yeah, I don't like it, man. <sighs> Dude, I'm afraid of it too, man. Uh, you know, but it's coming, Jay. And he said, you know, actually when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast, he had said like five to 10 years. And now he just came out with that live stream saying, Hey, we're looking for people to come work for our company yeah. because we want to make it still this, might be five or 10. I think we want to make this mainstream. So yeah. everybody has access to it. Now, I don't know what that means because you know, that that's what they said about internet, right? Well, everyone's going to have access to internet and we know that that's not the case. Well, you mentioned it and I looked into it and it was like a, he brought out three pigs and then one pig, uh, had a neural link in it. Yeah. One had the neural link then taken out, and then the other one, I forget what the third one was actually, but like he brought, yeah, I forget because they're doing tests on these pigs, and like one pig would like eat, and then like this computer would show like the mental, right, like, like colors or whatever. Uh, it still seems like it's far off, you know, but but yeah, but things move faster and faster, and if anyone's going to get it done, it's definitely him. But uh, and I mean, I don't know, in my opinion, the scary part for me is it just like everything else. Right. The elite get everything first yeah. and not only the elite, but the military and who knows, you know, what they have and what they're capable of doing now. But uh, this shit ain't going to come trickle down to me and you right off the bat. You know, I mean, this is going to be because the neural link, what he's talking about is. Uh, you know, not having to learn a new language. It's it's learning how to do stuff. It's it's programming, then programming robots to do the labor. And so then you, you think about that and it's like, okay, well, if robots are doing all the labor, then how does the distribution of wealth work then? Oh, know? shit, we already did that. We had fucking mechanical arms doing shit. Yeah, fucking McDonald's shit. It, 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 that was the biggest lie I think society got sold was oh, that technology, yeah. whether it's the industrial revolution, whether it's the fucking internet. What, like what, what you realize is that, no, we're working more increased hours than we ever have <laughs> right it makes no fucking sense it's fucked up dude. because we now we're trying win. to compete maybe with the computer i don't know but right. like um all i know is that we all thought we we're chilling on fucking couches and sipping martinis while the robots are going to work and that hasn't been the case yeah it seems right. to have ramped up mm-hmm. our work hours and uh so i mean fuck, basically I this Neuralink is making superhumans i yeah. think in a nutshell that's what it's gonna do it's gonna happen right it's gonna happen man and it's i it's, just wish it happened like in three generations where I don't have to worry about right. it. But if they were like, hey, this could cure depression, 
I suffer from depression since I was a little kid. Man, that would get my ears up. Like, man, anything to get rid of that. Well, it is. Yeah. They did say that it's depression. Help depression. Yeah. Anxiety. All right, put it in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Sold me. But it's crazy. You know, they yeah. drill a head in your uh, a hole in your skull, and you know they plug it with this fucking device. And, and then, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like the size of a quarter. Because originally gonna do it behind the ear. They had one behind the ear. And then they change it to up here. Yeah, and it was big. Because you'd have that charger that goes behind your ear while you sleep. There's a fucking charger, right? Something, yeah. It's and like now a little, there's like yeah, some a like, computer. I don't know. It seems weird. It's fucking insane, yeah. bro. And you know what, man? I, you know, tying this with the other stuff that we we're talking about and, and the Civil War and all this shit. I don't know. It sounds cliche. It may sound a little gay, but it's like, <laughs> dude, can't we all just get along? You know, it's like the dude, answer is no, obviously. No, yeah, it, it obviously is. Yeah. You know, and I, I just wish people would put all this past them and say, like, you agree with that. I agree with this. Those are your beliefs. These are my beliefs. But hey, you're a cool motherfucker. And I still like you. You know, it's like, why create this division? Why create this separation when, yes, we all are, uh, uh, we all can have our own opinions. Kumbaya. Uh, well, you're a very positive dude. And uh, that's why a lot of people like you. And uh, and uh, I think that that shows and how you thought it's, um, it would be nice. It would be nice. Is it feasible? Haven't seen it happen yet. I hope it does. But um you know, I do believe that being uh, the consciousness and and being conscious and maybe doing some DMT or doing some drugs has kind of opened those pathways for people. And I think on a greater scale, if you had a fucking leader that was eating mushrooms, like you think he's, oh man, we got to stop these, right? I don't know. But then how do you do it? Do you give the writers mushrooms? I don't know. So I don't know what the answer is. And maybe it's something in the future that's different. Maybe it's a neural link. But I think it always boils, the destruction always boils down um, ignoring sexism, racism, and all that shit, but like um, it comes down to a society has, let's say, everyone's purple. Like they will take all that shit out because that right. causes its own issues, right? The racism and stuff. But like, there's those that do and receive some type of benefit for their labor or for their stress or for their hard work, and there's those in the middle that do all right, and then those that do want everything for free and easy and right. don't want to work for it. Mm -hmm. And then on uh, to base off that, but then there's uh, someone maybe in charge that makes it harder for this guy to do something. Right. Um, because of whatever reason. So I think that's where all, all these problems come from. One is, is a guy looks at a guy that's making it and whether it's jealousy or hate says, Oh, he doesn't deserve that. Mm. And maybe he doesn't, maybe he got it from his rich dad. I don't know, but it doesn't um, mean he doesn't deserve it. I guess not. Cause that's his dad. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's a good point. But at the same time, then there's this invisible hand making it rough for a group of people or making it rough for all of them or whatever. And I think this is where all these conflict comes in. But I don't understand how these three people are, are fighting with each other and not looking at this hand. Right. Because you might want to think that hand's Trump. I doubt it. It's got to go beyond, right? It's got to go beyond. I, yeah, it does. Well, yeah. I think he's a small sliver of, of what that's about. But, you know, going back to the book about um, the elites and, and who's really fucking controlling shit, man. The 13 I mean, families? Well, no, even uh, so. Yeah, 13 families. Yeah, of course. But it, it's it's um, what's the book called? I was just telling you about that. Actually, it's coming in the mail, I think, tomorrow. Um, yeah, I did a little research on the book, but just on because I remember my government class. I talked what's about it called, but it's, it's basically talking about 6000 people that make decisions that will uh, not benefit, but it will affect 6 billion people. Right. And yeah. these 6000 people are not just presidents and, and you no, know uh, no. you know this kind of thing or, they or get even, the presidents elected or see yeah right exactly or ceos it's like <clears throat> board members right because yep. if you're the board member of let's say chase morgan bank right you're making decisions first for your stockholders second for your employees and then third for the general public yep. right so when you have these meetings you go to the geneva convention or you go to some random convention across the globe you're talking about how can we make money to please these these, these three things in that order, right? Yeah. And so it's like, damn, like these motherfuckers, probably 12 people sit on a board, are making a decision that's going to affect thousands of fuck millions yeah. of fucking people. It's, it's, it's interesting, you know, because those people have no idea what it's like to live way down at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So how can they make decisions that are going to affect someone's life way at the bottom, when they have no idea what that life is like. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting, man. It's interesting how that power dynamic works and it's, you know, distribution of power, distribution of wealth. It, it's just power.
Yeah, and it, it gets, um, yeah, because it all leads to power and control. But it, yeah, I mean, these groups, Bilderberg Group and all these things have been meeting forever. These families mm -hmm. have been mentioned a lot. And in the United States, there's families that have been mentioned a lot. Um, um, you know, there's one thing I, I hope, unless we get super conspiracy, but there's one thing I think that ties us in together. And I, because I, I've thought about the like fucking groups and Bohemian Group and all, all that shit. Right. But I thought like we share the planet. So it is in their interest. Now I'm going to play devil's advocate because I, I just thought hit me right now when you're saying this. Like, is it in their interest to keep the planet safe or is it in their interest to get rid of some of the rascals that are uh, causing trouble mm. um, to make their lives more safe because they want their great grandkids to live? Do they want to continue the human evolution or are they fucking going jumping around dimensions in their fucking time machines? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 and you know what? I, who knows what the fuck it is, really? But I, I, you know what? It doesn't seem like they care much about the planet. You know, I mean, because companies are getting away with polluting oil spills in the ocean yeah. and pollution into rivers mm -hmm. and this kind of shit, and then they're just getting away with it, right? Deforestation yeah. and fracking and all this bullshit, yeah. right? It doesn't seem that that's the case, but I think that's a valid point, man. Is is if these fucking 6,000 people have that much power, then you have to at least think that they're being somewhat considered, right? They're like the best judgment that they, you know, not the best, but they, you know, you would think that they would, you know, throw a smidge in here and there for the planet and for the, for the small folk. Well, um, I think like, uh, maybe they do like the North Dakota, Dakota pipeline. I don't know. You know, who knows? But, uh, I want, you always, I like, gotta think if I was there, say my dad's like this rich guy, my right. great, great, great grandpa's right at the time there. And I've, I'm sitting in this group, you know, um, not, not a lot like, um, uh, Buddha, you know, he was a rich kid, you know, but he thought differently. So you, you just gotta be people with different thoughts. So I always think it has to come to something greater. And I know I'm a conspiracy guy or whatever, but, but like, it's gotta come to like, they know something we don't. Right. And um, I agree. I want to know that shit. I do too, man. Like, Come you, on. You, you don't think that some of those are, are those rich kids <clears throat> like, hey, if you turn from the family, like you're out. You know, I don't know. Suicided. Yeah, maybe. That's yeah. I, you know what? I agree too, man. I think, you know, it's, it's that, you know, we talk about it quite a bit. It's the esoteric knowledge, right? It's, it's the knowledge of something that nobody else knows that gives you power over them. Right? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, who, who fucking knows? Uh, you know, and Here's what I do, Jay. Let me tell you what you do. And I want to know what you do because we, we got to do something, right? To take our mind off of this shit. That was a confusing fucking sentence. Was it? What'd you say? Here, here's what I do. I'm going to tell you what you do. Or I want to know what yeah. you do. Or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, to, to keep saying, to keep saying, this is what I do. I listen to a lot of this guy, Devin, the dude, shout out to this motherfucker, because I don't know. I think he's a lot like the way I feel. And I've listened to him fuck since seventh grade, you know? And it took me out of a lot of depressed states. It, it helped me. You get depressed? Get through You're sometimes. human? <laughs> you I know, it, well. It's helped me with relationships. It's helped me with all kinds of shit. Just, to, you know, you slap on some Devin the dude. He's rapping some real shit. Well, music in general. Well, music yeah. in general, right. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, it's. Lucky Dube got me through a lot of hard times. Hey, there you go. I'm yeah. going to have to check out Lucky Dube. So is it music for you, you think, that, that helps you? My, oh, yeah, it helps. But number one, it's working out. Okay. Yeah. Number one, if I if I don't fucking you know, I don't know what it is. I get motivated by anger and and hitting that bag or right jujitsu or whatever is always put a it's the closest to therapy I think I've gotten. I've never gone to therapy, but it's 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 felt very I'm more positive. I'm looking at the world in a almost different eyes. It's okay. insane. It's insane. So when I don't do it for a while, like now I'm like, ah, ah you know, I'm gonna fucking murder someone. Okay. I'm gonna burn down a fucking Kmart. <laughs> Walmart bitch. Yeah, Kmart don't even exist anymore. Oh shit, really? <laughs> Circle K. <laughs> So oh, that's cave. funny. Yeah. Huh, that's interesting, Jay. Yeah, you know what? I've heard that before. I've heard that, you know, uh working out is a stress weaver for a lot of people. And especially jujitsu. Jujitsu's got a crazy rap about mm. having this like therapeutic thing. And it's a mental and physical thing. I think that's why I just had this discussion with a friend. I got into jujitsu. Um, I don't know. I preach it to him a lot. He made his own decision, but uh he's been in it for a year or maybe over and might even be better than me at this point, you know. But um he taught I said, Do you think it's therapeutic? And he said, Yeah, he says, I go, why? I get the mental and physical kind of um, we're kind of just talking about like, it's not just like you're kicking a ball or you're even boxing, hitting a punching bag. And sometimes you spar, but like every day at the end of jujitsu, you learn a move and you drill it, you drill it. Mm. And then at every end they go, okay, live roll. And that means me and you without punching or anything. Um, sometimes in May class, they do that, but we would, I would try to tap you 
and you would try to tap me. We do not stop. We have five minutes and that's a long time. Maybe it's 10 minutes, but sometimes it's usually three to five. And I try to choke you or I try to use a move I learned today or last week or whenever mm -hmm. to make you tap on my arm and say, I give up. You murdered me. Right. And I, and you try to do the same to me. And jujitsu is something that you could be the biggest buffest guy and go in there and get your ass kicked. Right. Now you're going to do a little better than the fat guy, but it's a lesson. Like you have to learn and spend years into it. I've been doing it for years and I still suck, you know, and it's like the slow process of growing and, and getting better and then mm. beating the guy that beat you because you're showing up to class more. It really is that thing I said, the harder you get in, the better you are. Right. And I think there's something about getting killed every fucking training. Can you okay. do about five rolls, three to five rolls after every class? You're drenched, you're dead, you're fighting for your life. Right. And, um, I think something like that brings something, it kills the ego. Mm. It makes you feel small and humbled. Sure. And then you get a win and you feel great about yourself because mm. you earned it in the right way. Right. Yeah. Hey, good point, Jay. Yeah. You know what? I've never got into anything like that. I mean, I've, I've worked out and I, you know, I had gym memberships over the past fucking 20 years, but you know, seldomly went fucking wasting my money. But uh, you know what? I, yeah, I, I guess I felt that kind of way. Never, never really thought of it that way. But you know what? I also think of like my kids, like, you know, something about, uh, you know, because I'm always busy. I'm on my computer. I'm doing this or I'm working and shit like that. And, you know, I, I try to spend as much time with my kids as I can. But something about like, hey, you want to battle a Mario Kart? Like, yeah, let's battle. My daughter will get in. And so now it's me and my two kids like battling out a Mario Kart. Like, dude, I, I don't think about anything else except winning both of them at Mario Kart. Yeah, you don't let time. them win? No, hell no. Hey, is your son kicking your ass at chess yet? No, not yet. Well, not we yet. haven't played. Fuck, dude. We haven't played chess in over fuck, two months maybe. Yeah. God damn it. We need to get back. We were talking about it once like a long time ago and you are saying like, he's getting close. Hey, dude, yeah. he was getting close. That fucker. I bet uh, we, should, we should continue playing. But it, it's something about that. You know, it, it's something about just letting your mind go into something good and not so much into something bad. You know? Yeah. Well, and um, yeah, and whatever works for you, whatever, whatever helps. Um, uh, just sitting there and doing nothing and continuing the same thing. Like if you're depressed and down yep. and out and you're just doing the same shit. And it's, trust me, I suffer from depression. It's hard when you're depressed to move. It's right. hard to fucking think. It's Absolutely. hard to motivate yourself to uh, you. You'll look at you just like I ain't gonna fucking work. Fuck that douchebag. You know, like you'll just make up a reason. And mm -hmm. I guarantee, go to jujitsu. Everyone be nice to you. Hopefully, if not, they're an asshole. But nine times out of ten, they're the sweethearts because they've been choked out all so much. You know, mm -hmm. they died so much. But uh, try something, whether writing, I don't know, music, but um, working out. I, you know, it's been proven to work, um, relieving stress. But on another subject, Nick. Um, uh, a listener of ours brought this to my attention this morning um, and sent, sent us a message and was saying that, are we going to talk about Joe Rogan moving to Spotify? Because we have mentioned it. Mm. He's officially on Spotify now. Yeah, that's right. As of September 1st. Stuff's still on YouTube. I hope they keep it. But the weird thing was some people have noticed some episodes have been missing on the Spotify because we've said the whole library would be transferred oh, over. Joe really? has said that multiple times. Which ones? Oh, I got a list here. But uh, a lot of them happen to be, I was, the guy that messaged me said it seems to be right wing people. And someone was like, oh yeah, fuck this guy. Fuck this. But at the same time, it's like, well, I guess his voice, he's allowed to have his opinion. Yeah, everybody um, is. But it was like, interesting they chose, so maybe it's Spotify doing this um but uh 14 episode 1458 with chris delia he's a guy that got accused of um messaging oh, young girls yeah, we talked right, about that's right uh so probably that's why he got out. 1356 michael Shermer. i know that i've seen him i don't remember who he is tommy chung 1303 tommy chung is gone what the fuck i'm saying something weird uh that 1296 joe list 1255 Alex Jones returns is not on spot. the greatest mm. podcast I've ever seen. That's the one you're talking about. Yeah, still on YouTube. I'm gonna download that shit in case they look race mm. on YouTube. I assume they're not gonna race anything for YouTube because why would they? It makes money. Yeah. But 1182, uh, Nick Kroll, comedian, not sure why. 1164, Nick Kroll made that. I think Nick Kroll is the one that made that show where like it's about kids going through puberty, a cartoon. And like the fucking monster has like a dick nose or something. Like <laughs> he's like the sexual urge. I don't oh, I forget what it's called. It's funny as fuck. But um, 1164, Mikaelia Peterson. I don't know who she is. 1093, Owen Benjamin with Kurt Metzger, who's a uh, old fighter, I believe. Mm. And then Owen Benjamin's kind of a hardcore right, right guy. Um, and I believe him and Joe have been butting heads for many years. Mm. He's like just all his posts are choking this, choking that. <laughs> like uh, it's kind of weird, but he, you know, anyway, he has opinions. But 998, Owen Benjamin again, 980, Crystalia again, 979, Sargon of 
Akkad. I don't know who that is, hmm. but that's an old like Persian leader or something like that. Or okay. Assyrian, I think. But um, weird. Inter- that is weird. You know what? I was Business, listening to uh, one of Joe Rogan's podcasts not too long ago, maybe a month ago or so. And he was saying that he likes freedom, right? And, and you know this. Joe just wants to do his fucking thing. And so yeah. when the. That's why this was shocking. When the Spotify people came up to him, I guess they had asked him, well, who, who's going to be the first show? And he and he's like, what the fuck? Who cares? What does it matter to you? Like, you know what they, I mean? They called him and said, so who do you think about the first show? And he's already like, fuck these guys. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's like, I wonder if it's Spotify. I wonder if it's him. Well, Joe said this on a lot of podcasts. Says, Once you get those suit and ties in, like you're fucked. Like they just ruin everything. They right. took a great show, make it bad because of PC culture, whatever, money, whatever, marketing. And he's like, and he apparently used to have people come in. They bring their PR guy. And he's like, no, do not come in. You have to, you, we have a spot okay. for you with a TV. You can watch, but you cannot be in the same room. Okay. Like, no, don't say that. You know? Yeah. He's right, like, I right. want real motherfuckers. Imagine Elon Musk PR guy in there. He would have never smoked that joint. Yeah, I don't know. Elon's pretty crazy, dude. <laughs> he's fucking he's crazy. I mean, he lost a lot of stock smoking that joint, oh, but God, uh, a lot of people lost a lot of money. But uh, um, I do. It sucks. I, I'm sure he's going to comment on it because everyone's talking about the MMA forums yeah, and also on some of the the, the podcast forums. But um, it, YouTube seem you know YouTube pulls us down. You play a song, and I get it. There's yeah, rights right. and stuff. But even like they're really strict sometimes, and um, we're probably not big enough to get taken down as we should. But um, <laughs> I'm sure that I don't know why Tommy Chong would be taken down. Right. It seems a bit weird, like because he had a federal crime for shipping a paperclip or whatever yeah, right. a roach clip. So it seems weird, and I hope, uh, I hope you know everything gets corrupted and every great thing ends. And I wonder if Joe Rogan's one of those things. And at the same time, are we looking too far into it? Right? Is it maybe it's a glitch? Maybe it's just something that happened because we had the problem with the uh, iTunes and some of our podcasts weren't playing. I would say that if these names didn't fit a certain category of troublemakers, and I believe. I thought Joey Diaz was on here. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe 1296 was Joey Diaz, not Joe List. <laughs> I don't know. I fucking was tripping. But uh, I thought one of Joey Diaz's episodes, well, I'm like, come on, dude. Like, that's his like, good friend. But like, so I assume it's not Joe. And I assume it's not a glitch because some of them are kind of conservative or Tommy Chong's not conservative, but he's a, f- did a federal crime. And right. this guy had a crime. So the names just kind of have a pattern. So I assume it's done on purpose. And I don't know, man. Maybe Spotify has an agenda. You know, um, two episodes of Chris D'Elia and two episodes with Owen Benjamin. That's- I'm sure they are paying Joe a lot of money. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, so that's interesting in its own. I, I was thinking the other day they smoke weed all the time on the podcast. Are they going to do that in Texas? You think? I don't know. Uh, I would guarantee it. Because isn't it illegal in Texas? I'm sure he'll figure out a way. Because he used to do it on YouTube and you would just see him like, oh, and then you just see him come back and smoke. Oh, okay. So right. I'm sure if he has to be clever. But have you seen the new studio? I've seen them building it. I haven't seen the final. Dude, it's product. like a space. I don't know if I like it or hate it, but it's, yeah, it's, it's super like Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. It's arch, which might help with sound, but it's um, it's got red colors and all these lights. And I haven't and seen it. It looks like you're like gonna get high and fucking go for a trip and conversation. Has he had shows there already? Uh, no. He, ha- I think he. I, I can't tell if he's. It's built. It's completed. I saw a picture today, or yesterday, but I can't tell if he's recording in the old studio for a while because he had Miley Cyrus on recently. Yeah, I just seen that. And it would seem like the old studio. Definitely yeah, the yeah old. it was. It was. But I don't know if that's LA, LA or they made a fake one in Austin why this is being done. I don't know. <laughs> I assume it's LA. <laughs> a dummy studio. Maybe. But I money. was thinking about that, right? Because because then... Hey, they- look. Kobe says, hi, guys. Hey, Mr. Williams. Thanks hey, Kobe. for tuning in, buddy. Call in and you could uh, slur your speech. <laughs> did you see him comment on that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you were a little tipsy, as was I, as you, was Jay. You want to go the river first, you guys. I thought you were all crazy assholes, but it worked out. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. But you know what? I mean, then I think there's, you know, who knows what's going to happen when he starts smoking weed and it's like, oh, shit, well, what's going on there? How much power does he have there? Like, what? Like, shit, I, so- he's not a huge pothead. No, I hear like uh, they did a Rolling Stones article about how hard he works because he does comedy yeah, at like, night. He yeah, wakes up and fuck, works out. I can't even imagine. Fuck, he has multiple jobs. UFC, he flies out. So a guy followed him for a day and wrote an article about him. He said like he saw him like he'd take like two or three puffs and then go. Mm. And um, um, which was disappointing to me because I thought it was a huge pothead. I'm sure he was at one time, but he he mentions that like a lot of people smoke too much and then mm. they fucking get lost or whatever. So he likes to just. Ride that wave a little bit, okay. which that is a good move. Everyone, yeah, I, right. I'm really, I'm a glutton, so it's hard for me to do that. <laughs> a glutton? Yeah. What's that? It's someone that can't like, they're just a slob. They eat everything. They oh, drink okay. everything. They smoke everything. <laughs> they can't stop themselves. Oh, they I need see. more and more and more. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say about that. But 
Hey, Kobe. Yeah, good about time. like him smoking weed and getting paranoid. Yeah, yeah. I think it was about weed, but I fuck, I don't remember. Um, oh, oh, I was gonna say, you know, I've uh, I have family in Texas, uh, way down south of Texas, but I've known people that have got busted with seeds Ugh. and roaches and have fucking got bust like seriously recently busted. no 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 back this is day. yeah back in the day this is probably yeah eight years ago something like that see they pulled over <laughs> willie nelson and his bus back in the day and searched it wow and then they did it to snoop it seems like i knew if they did it to- oh cool we got a caller ladies and gentlemen hold on kobe i gotta connect you Hey, Kobe. Kobe, hold on one second. There we go. Hey, man, you should be on. Kobe. You good? Hey. Yeah. Hey there, handsome. This is Cowboy Kobe. What's going on, guys? Cowboy Kobe. Kobe, how, how, how good of a time did you have uh, on episode number 21? Uh, for what I remember, it was blast. <laughs> is your mom I remember when we got done. I don't. She hasn't said anything. I don't know if she's watched it yet or not. I yeah, hope I'll, she doesn't. I'll make sure to text her. <laughs> <laughs> text her the link. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long episode. So it's a fucking it. long ass yeah. episode. <laughs> Good time though, man. Good time hanging out at the river. And uh, you know what? Still, if if you guys are watching live or if you're watching this when we uh, repost it, check out episode number twenty one. It was a good time. It was uh, Jay and I. I'll just give the breakdown. Uh, Jay moved in from San Francisco. I haven't talked to this guy in a fucking long ass time. We start hanging out. Coincidentally, back home to Central Valley, my cousin starts hanging out with Jay's cousin. What a copycat. What a copycatter. <laughs> and uh, so we were like, oh shit, you know, Mike's hanging out with Kobe. Here I am hanging out with Jay. And we're like, well, let's fucking just have a cousin podcast. And and that's what we did. Yeah. So uh, it was a good time, man. I had, yeah. I had a blast, Kobe. Yeah, it was a really good time. I remember when we were barbecuing afterwards, um, I was, you know, we were wondering how good it was, how good it turned out, and shit, I can't even remember what we talked about. <laughs> I was so fucking drunk. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we were all pretty. We went through uh, six twelve packs that day, and yeah. some whiskey. Yeah, we did, and, yeah, and a bunch whiskey. of cigars, I don't, I cigarettes, didn't, weed. I didn't do whiskey. Yeah, I didn't do the whiskey. Either, Me and Mike but, did. We handle that. Yeah, you guys did, but that, yeah, fucking six twelve packs. That that's a lot. Yeah, and, and uh, what, mm-hmm. what, uh, you know, one of them, maybe two of them, were at the river. Did you, Kobe? Yeah, did you, we had to leave the river because we ran out of beer, and I showed up with two twelve packs. That's right, Kobe. Did you watch the episode and watch Nick's beer? Calling you out, bro. No. Well, I watched, I watched the episode, but what what about Nick's beer? Was it, there's a big pile of beers that pile up <laughs> over the hours of the episode on mine and Mike's side, while the way and also the whiskey, mm-hmm. and then like you're just pouring, you keep pouring it into your a mug, and then uh, I'm pretty sure you can, <laughs> Nick was pretty cool over there with a couple of beers or something. How much you have? Mine got hot. Mine got hot. Let's Did you have that. like three or something? Yeah, I probably had like three or four beers. Oh man, you, you're sneaky, <laughs> dude. I, I was thinking, well, and you know what? I, I've been having some stomach issues. Uh, let's not go there because uh, let's just say I was on the toilet for a while. But uh, just having like some stomach issues, but um, but I'm also a bitch when it comes to drinking uh, beer. Although you could put it on when you want to, because when me, you, and Mike were up in sack, we drank all day, and I was like, I thought Nick could only drink like three <laughs> beers. I've been like babysitting him. I thought like in the podcast, like oh, like yeah. So, but then I was like, you, he'll drink on that day. I, I guess it's the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Live in the moment. Mm-hmm. So, Kobe, what's going on? Well, that's how Nick was whenever, whenever uh, me, Nick, and. Uh, his family and then Chef's family had rented a cabin up in Shaver and we went up for the weekend. And me and Chef were putting them back. And, you know, Nick was drinking a little bit. And um, I told him, well, you want a beer? He's like, no. I was like, come on, stop being a pussy. And he goes, you don't know how many beers I drink on a daily basis? And I was like, I don't know, six, 12? He goes, zero. <laughs> oh. That's right. You moved out of the valley. <laughs> yes. And moved out of the beer scene. Well, you know what? I, I just... Uh... Smoke a lot of weed, man. I smoke a lot of weed, and that's just kind of always yeah. been my thing, you know. Yeah, I don't usually smoke until like the end of the day, right? Like my in my little nightcap. Yeah, most time around friends. Then we're getting high and on top. Oh, of course, of course. We, we social smoking. Uh huh. Well, and you know what? It's it's like um, I've had to explain this several times in my life, but it's like. I don't smoke weed for the thrill. I don't smoke weed for the fun of it. I don't smoke weed because I think I'm cool. I smoke weed because it's part of my culture, I think. You know, I've been 
you know, I remember one of my earliest memories is being like three years old, four years old in uh, my uncle's 63 Impala. And that's a bench seat, you know, my mom on this side, my mm -hmm. uncle on this side, and they're passing joints to yeah. each other, you know, and, and here I am in the middle inhaling mm -hmm. all this shit. So, you know, and it, it's always just been a culture. The first time I smoked was in fourth grade. And ever since ninth grade, I don't think I've ever taken more than two months off. So, it's just a part of who I am. And I don't smoke all day, every day, you know, every once in a while I'll smoke in the morning, usually on the weekends, but you know, mostly it's after work, I'll light up a doobie and then, you know, it doesn't stop there. I probably smoke maybe two or three joints a night, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it's just something I've always done. It's something that helps me on multiple fronts, I think. And, uh, alcohol, man, I get tired. Yeah. When I drink alcohol, I, I fucking get tired. When I notice when you smoke weed, I you don't get go real hardcore. You like, uh, cause when we smoked weed, I'll be like, let's keep going. You know, but you like get a nice ride and then you kind of chill. Yeah. Or I'm right. like, let's keep going. going. Cause I'm playing. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, so you seem to like, have like when, when I'm, when I'm drinking, I can't stop. Otherwise I will get tired and you know, I don't want the party. And so I'm <laughs> oh. like, and that's Kobe's another, culture. Another bucket of beers when we're down at the bar. <laughs> Heroin's my culture, guys. Hey. My mom used to do it. No, I'm just kidding. She, <laughs> she never did it. <laughs> my bad. My stepmom, yeah. I met I've never done it either, but that's from, what I've, from what I've seen in movies, they, that always makes you go to sleep. Directly to right? sleep. Well, make sure, yeah, I, from what I've seen in San Francisco, from the waist up goes to sleep, but the legs stay awake. <laughs> they keep you standing. <laughs> the heroin yeah, they, they never managed to fall all the way down. Nope. You know, an interesting story. I um, used to be around a heroin addict and uh, rode in a car with him. And, you know, he was close to someone that I was close to. I won't say names, but, man, I remember going to Visalia from Lindsay after this guy just fucking shot up heroin. <clears throat> and I'm in the back seat. They're in the front seat. Is he driving? He's driving. Oh, fuck. He's fucking driving. I fucking swear to God, dude. It's like fucking he's dozing off while he's fucking driving, but he's staying straight. He would swerve every once in a while, and then this other person in the passenger should be like, hey, 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 hey. And then he's, oh, 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 I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. Holy shit. Like, motherfucker. That was the last time I ever did that How old shit. are you? Oh, I don't know, 17, 18 Jeez, probably. Jeez, that's crazy, man. Fucking insane, bro. So I've never touched that shit. I I. You know, you never say never, but I don't think I will ever fucking touch that shit. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. That's insane. Yeah, that, it's it's fucking nuts, man. And have you ever seen heroin? Yes, I've had it in my hand. In it's India. dirty. Oh yeah, it's fucking nasty looking, yeah. dude. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look like something you want on to your inject. Hand. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Like, I should probably not inject this. It's like when you see the snake that has the bright colors, it usually means it's poisonous. Yeah, beware. right. It's like that's what heroin is. But everyone's like, man, don't be a bitch. <laughs> right, right. But you know what? It's like uh, even like <clears throat> I, I'm not going to say all my family, but a good portion of my family smokes weed. And it's always like family gatherings. You know, there's always like Thanksgiving and Christmas. And there's always that group of people that goes outside, and passes around a few joints and goes back inside. It, it's just culture. Yeah. It, just it, like, you know, yeah. It, it's kind of interesting, actually. It's like cigars almost. Well, yeah. I feel like our generation is bringing that to our family. Hmm. The whole sneaking off and smoking thing. Well, well, your family. and my mom hates it. Oh, like our personal family is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like remember that Thanksgiving whenever I was outside smoking the joint with uh, some family members, and you uh, decided you didn't want to, and you came you came out to get something out of your car, Jay. And you're walking back, and uh, my mom had smelt it, and so she was trying to find us, and we just heard Jay yelling from like around the corner of the house. Shelly's coming. Shelly's coming. Shelly's coming. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, damn. Yeah, it's so funny when people get, like, sensitive about it because it's just, like, not sensitive to me. So, like, when they treat it like, oh, I'm just like, yeah. Like, I just feel like I just won't allow them to make it a thing, you know. But, yeah, I can see that, like, our family, like, we always smoke cigars. And my uncle started, and then we all, like, have circles and we smoke cigars. It's just kind of like a tradition. We smoke cigars. And I can see, like, for your family, we being the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I think, <clears throat> I think you're spot on. Yeah. Yeah, interesting too. Um, I ran into someone that it, he wasn't anti weed, but he was just never a weed smoker, you know, um, smoked cigarettes every once in a while. And I uh, just went and visited him not too long ago. And uh, he broke out a pipe in a little jar. And he's like, hey, man, check it out. I've been into this. And I'm like, dude, right <laughs> on, man. That's the best moment. Because I was against, I don't know if I was against it. Kobe might could say if I was against it. I just wasn't about it. Like, I just wouldn't do it a lot. I would always say no. I'd, every you once in a while. something that was laced, like, right. 
at the end of high school. And then after that, every time you would smoke, you'd get paranoid, so you hated it. Yeah, I think I, I smoked Cocoa Puffs or something, Ooh. and I uh, drove home. And uh, the Ozzy Osbourne, speaking of Black Sabbath and Ozzy Osbourne, but Ozzy Osbourne song, uh, uh, No More Tears, is, there's this little sign where it says, there's a crack in the sky. And it's <laughs> about the sky cracking, all the sky was cracking. And I drove up, I don't know if I was just young and dumb, but I drove up to a stop, obviously I was, but I drove up to a stop sign. And I looked, I had my buddy Sal, my buddy Big Al in the back, and I was like, eh. And we smoked to the guy who's now in prison. I think he might have got out for murder, but uh, <laughs> definitely a gangster. But he was, I went to the stop sign and the road was gone. It was just like earth ended there. Oh, it was just black. And I was like, guys, I know I'm tripping. And I didn't smoke weed back then that much. And the, But the gangster was kind of testing me. I was like, oh, yeah, bitch. And it was bong rips of this shit. Oh. And we were passing. I would not let him do a bong rip without I doing one because I was a white boy trying to prove himself, I guess. <laughs> but uh, tell my dad. But I remember they're like, take a left. And as I drove left, the road, do, 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 do. And then that road would develop until I got to the next stop sign. <laughs> Fucking insane, dude. And Damn. I didn't piss right. I didn't piss right for like two weeks. Like, like Friday was smoky. Oh, I literally shit. went to church with my family. And had to sit in the back by the bathroom because every five minutes I'd go and take a piss. Sometimes I didn't have to, but I always it might have been angel though. I don't know what it was. I really my face was numb. I don't know, man. Wow. I didn't smoke shit for a long time after that. Bad experience. Yeah. Bad experience. I'm just I'm just picturing picturing Smokey from Friday in the pigeon coop. Yeah, yep. exactly. Well, out after smoking angel don't smoke with those Mexicans. That's what I said. The only one can get me out was my mama. <laughs> 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 it's angel dust, Holmes. Yeah, it was. I don't know. Like, unless I was just a bitch, I don't know. But it, it I've never had an experience like that smoking weed ever. Yeah, <laughs> even edibles haven't been that bad. Hey, that'll do it to you. Yeah, that'll that'll fucking make you think twice the next I time. I think the sure. first time you spoke with me after that experience, uh, I had that house on Waddell, which was a big old party house. And um, you had oh, you were working at Big that. Five at the time, yeah. I remember. And you had to work like the evening shift, and it was like morning, yeah. We parted around the night noon, before. and we smoked, yeah. And you felt like shit, and I was like, "Well, just smoke, dude. You feel better." And so you smoked, and like an hour into it, like you were chill, you're having a good time, and then all of a sudden you're like, "How long is this gonna last? I gotta go to work at like five. I'm like, dude, you have plenty of time. Just chill out. You started getting all paranoid again. <laughs> it was out of your bubbler. We went to go meet um, some girls in Visalia to eat with them, and I didn't talk the whole time. And I remember yeah. I didn't talk the whole time. I was so paranoid. I was going to say something <laughs> stupid, which meant I took myself way too seriously back then. But then I did trip to Big Five. Still <laughs> high. Kobe lied to me. He didn't realize how much of a weed virgin I was. But I, they, of course, I walk in because when you're high, everything seems strange and odd. Like I remember I saw, I remember Kobe was driving Visalia and I saw a squirrel with the orange in his mouth run across the road. And I've never seen that in my life. And I was like, what the fuck? What's going on? What's going on? And then they were burning brush right there. I'm like, what's going on? Kobe's like, it's just weed. Things seem crazy. But then I go to Big Five and usually I just, sit in the back and play basketball in the back and then come out and sell a shoe or two. And I go <laughs> nice. and they, they right when I go, manager's like, Jay. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to talk to him. He's like, here's a ladder. I need you to go up to the ceilings and take these signs down. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> so I'll shift them up there. Like, just like paranoid as fuck. Dude, the house on Waddell, Kobe. That's God a good time. Damn, dude, I forgot Thursday all nights. about that shit, dude. Thursday nights, right, Kobe? Mm-hmm. Well, all the night, all the time. Oh, Thursday dude, it was every, every night. Basically every night but Sunday. Damn. Sunday was my day to die and sleep and do laundry. Dude, the four footer. We had mangled Monday. We had mangled Mondays, tipsy Tuesdays, wasted Wednesdays, thirsty Thursdays, fucked up Fridays, and then Saturday was just Saturday. <laughs> I think I said my brother got back from war at Big Five because I was working the night shift on Thursdays to get off early to mm-hmm. run to the mini mart, pick up Captain Morgan, and race to Kobe's house in Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was like mm-hmm. always like Thursdays. I would always go there. It's a fucking blast, man. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Oh, that. yeah, that was a fun house. Fucking Dieterly. Yeah. Yep, he was the landlord. Lived there with Steve. May you rest in peace. What? Rest in Steve peace, was hardly ever there. Oh damn! Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, uh, dude. The four footer. I remember that. Was it six feet? Six or footer, dude. Oh, six, all oh, six footer. Six footer. Trying to cut the white guy's oh, dick down. <laughs> <laughs> six footer. That's it was right. red, white, and blue. We called it. It was red, white, and blue. We called it the All American. Yeah, you couldn't light it yourself. Yeah, Kobe used to wake me up. I was all hung no. on the couch. Jay, can you light the six foot bong for me? <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, you had that nice Yeah, you had to have somebody there. You couldn't reach it. Yeah. I, I tried to teach my foot how to strike a lighter, but it just never took on. <laughs> you didn't have that. The only other way, I mean, I don't know how you would smoke that by yourself. No, you can't. Yeah, you had some nice. That little bubbler I remember was nice. Mm hmm. <clears throat> like when Chet fucked that up, he, he showed up in my house and I wasn't there and he wanted to smoke. And I was like, dude, there's some roaches in the ashtray. Just um, smoke those. 
Well, instead of ripping open the paper and putting the weed in there, he just found a bunch of roaches in there and was smoking. He was taking my little weed poker and uh, lodged like two of them down in the glass area where the water goes. So after that, water just tastes nasty. It was like dirty bong water all the time. Oh, nice. Man, you don't know how many fucking paraphernalia I lost at all the fucking house parties I had. Damn, I can't even oh, count. Oh, yeah, of course. Countless. Seen people just jack them? Oh, people jacked them all the time. Yeah. And and, and we broke a bunch. I feel like someone, you had a cool bong someone broke in the garage. I remember mean, it was like a big deal. Like a really cool bong or water bong. I don't know what it was. Maybe. Wasn't, wasn't it... Uh, I don't want to say his name. Never mind. <laughs> but then you had to buy it. But then you had to buy him a new. Yeah, a new that's, one. that's right. No, that got stolen. Yeah, yeah, that one got oh, stolen. That one got stolen. That's when I went to go pick olives because I owed this guy a fucking <laughs> a bong. fucking bong, and and somebody <laughs> had stole it from a house party that I threw. So I was like, uh, "Fuck, dude, I'll buy you another one." And dude, it was like three hundred dollars for this yeah. fucking piece. And uh, yeah, that that's cost at least, me, that cost me a week picking olives. I was gonna say that's at least three years of picking. <laughs> Fuck. Well, like uh, I remember, we Suhei, a uh, girl in high school, had a high, high school party, and we all partied out there. And someone stole her dog, <laughs> like a little oh, puppy that just reached damn. over, grabbed him. Oh, that's right. That's and I remember she's like, "Has anyone great. seen my dog?" I'm like, "Someone stole your dog, <laughs> fuckers, <laughs> Lindsay, dude." <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, who steals a dog? <laughs> damn. Lots of people. How do you spit that out of the party? <laughs> yeah jacket for sure jacket. right right <laughs> holy oh, shit balls, puppy, but still. dude nick i've been trying to call you for two days oh, are you mad at me <laughs> you remember that shit you told him at the podcast yeah remember that shit kobe no dude i, <laughs> I, I have no idea i seen one missed call from you that was today right i called yesterday too yeah well dude yes what was see, yesterday? See you're gonna go down to ventura this weekend are you going i'm leaving tomorrow what time? I don't know. Whenever. And when do you plan on? I work in the morning. I, mean, you, I don't work, but. <laughs> when do you plan on calling Mike? Play Mike Milan, Milan right there. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. Well, shit, Kobe. I'm sorry I didn't call you back, man. I. Uh, it's been. I, I was just saying my stomach's been fucked up. Actually, so much so that my wife uh, took it upon herself to make me a doctor's appointment. Two doctor's appointments, actually, because. Uh, uh, you know, I have family members, close family members that have stomach cancer and this and that. And, you know, my stomach's just been yeah. fucking with me for like, you know, this past week. And I went up to the mountains actually on Sunday after the podcast. And, dude, I got uh, – what's that called when you get sick on the road? Uh, car sickness? Yeah, like car sickness, car motion sick? sickness. Yeah, yeah. And I <laughs> never got that in my life. I was actually the last person to ever get that. And I got car sick and it's like, what the fuck's going on here? And so – I got back home Tuesday, slept all fucking day, dude. I got home actually Tuesday morning around 1, maybe Monday night around midnight, something like that. And then uh, I had to wake up because I had a morning meeting at 6.30 in the morning. And it was uh, over at 8.30. So I woke up, had the meeting, tired as fuck. And then right after the meeting, I fucking went back to sleep, woke up at 4 p.m. and just slouched the rest of the day. And then I had to work the next day. It, it's just been a, it's been crazy, Kobe. So I'm sorry I didn't get back to you. But, uh, yeah, dude, I – I wasn't planning on going, um, but uh, actually, coincidentally, my wife said, hey, you should go. You know, She I'm, wants some alone time yeah, at the she house? Pro- yeah, she Take probably Take the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I did rearrange some things with work, and then that's why we're shooting this uh, podcast on Thursday, because I, I, I think I am now planning on leaving tomorrow. Well, when do you want to go? We're right down there together. Well, I'm planning on leaving tomorrow super early, probably like at four in the morning. And then, um, so that'll put me at your area around seven in the morning. And then I, I, I do work on Sunday, but I'm going to try to rearrange that. So that way I can come back on Sunday, uh, and not have to worry about it. Well, I got to come back Sunday too, because my brother is going to be in town and his birthday is Monday. So I got to come back Sunday too. So, so you're thinking Sunday right. leaving SoCal around <clears throat> noon or something? Well, maybe even before that. Well, I think we only have the house until... Sunday. Everybody's leaving Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he said that we're gonna have brunch and then the, after that gone. Isn't it starting tonight? Thursday? Yeah, it's starting tonight. Okay. What are you guys doing? Well watching or something? They're going uh, deep sea fishing today. Oh, cool. And then tomorrow's fish fry, and then I think Saturday's like game night or something. Is that right, Kobe? I uh, think. So what was it? Tomorrow's barbecue and fish fry, and I don't know if they're gonna play cards tomorrow. Yeah, I think they said something about no or strippers. Or it was going to be Saturday. No strippers? No strippers. I hope so. There's been so, well, many, I hope so. Been so many bachelor parties without strippers. I know. It's like the new thing. What is this? Me too or something. I don't know. God <laughs> damn it. 
It's probably yeah, for the well, best. Well, I, I mean, I know, uh, I know his spouse is real religious, oh, and okay. I know he's he's kind of slowly getting into that. So I, I don't know if there's going to be strippers. I, I God would, hates strippers. Damn it. <laughs> I mean, well, I and, so. and now they have to be six, now they have to be six feet away, so it's not really worth it. Ooh, strippers with masks. Can I have that seven foot dick, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It's all worth Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh man, yeah, I, I have no idea what it's gonna be like. And then again, I wasn't planning on going, but they're gonna catch the fish, and that's what they're gonna do the fish fry with. That's the plan. Know. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't. I've never been deep sea fishing before. I went once with Colby. I've done it on both. I've done it on the west coast and the east coast. Oh shit! In the East Coast, I just remembered not catching anything and getting drunk. Nice, being caught, tired. Yeah, and I said, "Well, we worked, we worked nights, and then everybody else went to crash out for a couple of hours." And I was like, "Fuck that! I'm gonna stay up and drink, and then hit the boat." Well, we weren't catching anything. The water was all choppy, and so I just went down into the boat and crashed out. And I woke up to uh, um, hearing Wayne, one of our bosses, going. Well, will it hurt him if we put it in there with him? And I woke up right away. I was like, what are these fuckers doing? Oh, the only thing they caught was they caught this big old eel, and they were going to put it in the bed with me. Yikes. And so uh, I see Wayne coming down the steps into the um, into the boat, and I'm sitting, I'm like sitting straight up in the bed. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, ah, oh, fuck, he's awake. That was the guy who slept in the basement in Baltimore, and he was next to me and would wake up all flying fist and shit. Wow. It was Wayne. He's, he yeah. sounds like he had issues. He's a legend. <laughs> oh, wait, don't fuck with Wayne. Wayne will cut your head off. He's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. crazy. He, he had a tank for that's for sure. Yeah. I've, I've never been deep sea fishing. I, you know, I was kind of looking forward to going, but today's, uh, I had to work today and it was a, a large detail. It was a big ass fucking hunting truck. This guy uses it to go hunting. It's fucking humongous. And it was really dirty mud, you know, all oh. over the place. So it took me forever, dude. It's one of those ones. Actually, I got home to take a shower because I had her come over here to Jay, uh, to Jay's to, to do the podcast. And dude, stripped down. My boxers were wet, like soaked. Like that's how much sweat I was sweating today. Damn. It was fuck. It was a fucking long so this was like today. A hunting truck. It's a hunting. Yeah. Big ass fucking F three fifty. I just figure you like coming to clean it. And then he's like some redneck and camouflage. And he's just like watching you. Like I'm <laughs> some tobacco. Like he got a pretty mouth. <laughs> yeah. Come on, boy. You missed your spot, dude. <laughs> No, like that, that guy on that movie Dodgeball, that where they have the car wash and yeah, they have to ride a that's what I'm thinking. Oh, and mix in like short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> in that tip, bro. No. Well, I guess what he's got is this weird guy that keeps having this dude wash his truck over and over again. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, Dodgeball, I forgot. Dude, uh, you don't know this guy, electrician, cool motherfucker, man. Used to be in my business group. Um, cool, cool dude, man. Goes hunting every year. I mean, last time I detailed this truck. Found a handgun and a big old fucking Bowie knife. And I was like, come on, man. What is this? And fucking changed like crazy. You know, a quick story, though, for for, uh, for both of you guys. This was pretty cool, man. Um, I got a lead from a guy that I know who owns a body shop. He's sending me business every once in a while because, you know, his clients also need detailing work. And so he sent me this guy who has an old truck. And there's, I guess, an S10 convention going on somewhere around here. And he just happened to have an S10 that he wants to was spiffy up. And it, I mean, it's it's a shitty truck. It's got rust all over it. And there's some paint here and there. But he's like, I just want the paint that's there to pop, you know. And, and I know it's a shitty truck, but I just want it to look like the paint that's there is good, you know. And I said, cool. like, all right, you know, I'll do that. And this was a phone call. And so I, you know, I Google the place. And it's like a, an old fucking custom shop where they custom cars and they chop the tops and you know fully custom work <clears throat> and i get there and it's probably like six or seven dudes i mean all white dudes with beards fucking up to here you know i mean big old beards tatted up everywhere you know and i'm like oh shit like you know this this kind of guys and fucking go in there talk to the dude coolest motherfucker ever bro go into the talk to some other guys that are working there all cool motherfuckers you know hey man you want something to drink you want something it's like Damn, cool motherfuckers, you know? And it's like, and dude, I, I posted something on my story and it's like, dude, this is my kind of place. Like, I love being around this kind of shit, you know, cars and custom and they had the radio blasting and there's actually some old alternative shit. And it's like, fuck, dude, I was, lo- I had a blast yesterday it's at work. It's a good environment. It was a great environment, man. I had, yeah. I had a great time. I always wonder if guys like that, because they know they look intimidating, because I'm sure they, they, right. they know how they look. And so they sometimes let you know, like, hey, I'm cool, like. Because I know you're seeing this. Sometimes I wonder if they're like that. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I wonder. But you know what? I don't. I mean, I don't think they went above and beyond anything. But it's just you know they just came off as just cool motherfuckers. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's the shop? It's called Blue Collar Customs. Oh, yeah, nice yeah. name. Yeah, Blue dude. I, that's what I told him too. How long have you had that name? He's like, oh, dude, over twenty years. Like, dude, that's a fucking awesome name. I love it. Dude, I thought of getting a tattoo like, uh, um, because like I went blue collar to white collar, but like I always want like remember the blue collar roots. And who knows, I might be back in blue collar. <laughs> but like, uh, getting like a blue collar tattooed or like some type of symbol mm-hmm. probably like stupid as fuck, just like a square. But, like, <laughs> Like, I was thinking, like, that'd be dope, like a blue collar, like tattoo or some shit. Yeah, that's a cool name, blue collar. It, it is, and and dude, they had like blue collar customs, blue collar customs, nice. right? And uh, got a handful of his cards because, of course, I'm around vehicles all day, and I'm actually in the market for a, a project car. Nice. And I've always had one. I've always had an old school car that I've always just tinkered around with, you know. And I, I haven't had one for fuck about three years now, and I'm itching, so I want one. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, the last one I had so was that last one you had was sold that Volkswagen. Yeah, that '73 Volkswagen Squareback had that for about three years and uh, didn't do much with it. I mean, I I messed with some stuff here and there with the body and the interior. Never got into the engine on that one, but I just fucking love having a classic car, man. It's awesome. You got a garage, so yeah, right. I do. Wait, are you looking for anything in particular? Or? Yeah, yeah. Actually, right now I'm looking for a Datsun 510. Oh, nice. You know what those are? Yeah. Oh, dude, I love those cars. But yeah. they're hard to come by and they're expensive. People don't like to give them up, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right, right. You know, independent suspension. They used to be race cars. Actually, uh, some of them were made in Mexico. Datsun had a facility in Mexico for a while. And cool little cars, man. I like them. Yeah. But I might have to. You know that Datsuns are actually Nissan? Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, a lot uh, of them. But at the time that they were wanting to sell here in America, they thought Nissan sounded too Japanese and it was too close to after World War II. They didn't think that they would sell well, so they switched the name to Dobson for their American sales. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. But but I know um, a lot of like the swaps, like engine swaps, are always Nissan. Well, usually. I mean, you can get like, mm-hmm. I mean, you can put any engine in, in an old Dobson. They're fucking huge ass compartments. But mostly the engine swaps are, are newer Nissan engine swaps. Because they just... Uh, I see a lot of those dots in the 260Zs for sale around here. Yeah, I see a, a lot of those too. hatchback type seats. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of those. Yeah, fuck you, Kobe. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, yeah. I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> hey, dude, but we can't leave. We can't leave until after 10 tomorrow. I just realized something. Why? Valley Pier, Valley Pier doesn't open until 10. <laughs> oh, Kobe, their dispensary is in SoCal. Or buy it up here. All right, yeah. Or get deliveries. Well, uh, so actually, um, I don't know. I just feel like I want to get there as early as possible only because I just want to have as much time over there as I can. Um, you know, Ooh, I, I hate actually, those short trips. I hate the short Drive trips. All the way there. And it's like a six to seven hour drive. Oh, God. You know, so it's like, you know what? Yeah, it's like four or five hours from here. Like, I actually want to get there like at 10 in the morning, you know, or nine yeah. in the morning, you know? Well, I'm sure there's got to be, there's gotta be clubs in Ventura, right? Oh, fuck. For Absolutely. Sure. Of course. Sure. And actually, I have a, a buddy that lives down there now, so he may be able to point us in the right direction. Sure, you'll probably get better and cheaper shit than okay. Valley Pure. Yeah, right, right. Um, well, well, then, fuck it. Let's leave it whenever you get into town. I'll well, be ready. Then, okay, let me uh, let me call you after this, and then uh, we'll we'll make some arrangements. Because, yeah, I, I, it, actually, you're not really going, huh? You're just you're just making it sound good for the podcast. I am. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm going to go, go to sleep. Curse, I can't go. I forgot. I'm going to go to sleep <laughs> after this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna text you next week. You're like, nah, oh, really? Kobe, my <laughs> your wife's gonna make you go, bro. She's gonna kick you. She make probably you will up, make you. You're, you're, you're gonna pull. You're gonna pull an Arthur. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. I was asleep. Yeah. Really, we heard you laughing from outside. Yeah, we're all out there, Arthur. You son of a bitch. Actually, he texts me the <laughs> next day and said, "Hey, dude, I, you know, I didn't hear you guys, or whatever." And then he texts me uh, yesterday and said that he watched the entire Primo podcast. So that's cool. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. He, what do you think about it? He never tells me. I always ask him, like, well, what do you think about it? And he, all he said was, ah, I just watched you guys fucking around on the podcast right now. And then that's all he said. That means he hates it. Yeah. He does hate it. <laughs> but yeah. He, he did say that he's going to um, have a couple weeks off pretty soon, and he wants to come up to SAC to go fishing. So I said, well, fuck, if you're in town, you should just jump on the pod, you know? So you guys said that he's real into conspiracy theories, right? He is, right. So that, that'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've been trying to get him on. So hopefully uh, he does commit and uh, we can get him on. Um, but uh, shit, we just lost audio video. Uh, should we wrap it up? SD card. So we probably should wrap it up. Uh, so that, that actually had over two hours on it. So we've been going uh, 
two hours. And also, by the time this video comes out, that weekend thing might be weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's going to be over. I won't matter. Who gives a fuck? Uh, I mean, I mean we're then next it, week so. you can talk about it. Yeah, I can cut it out. Whatever. But uh, yeah, let me uh, let me. Get so are you going to bring your GoPro? Or are you going to do a little? Uh, oh, someone got GoPro addicted. Oh, someone wants got addicted to the starlight. Woo-hoo. I think Kobe. I'm telling you, you need your own. I thought I thought that was cool footage, dude. It was. Dude, did you see it all? Yeah, it was cool. I had fun editing that. Did, so you did you watch the episode afterwards, Kobe? After Jay edited it? Yeah. It came uh-huh. out good. Well, man. I watched it. I watched the live part, uh, and then whenever you guys came out with the edited one, I watched it too. Dude, I loved what Jay did with that the uh, the fast forwarding and the and the speeding up. And I wish I had like forty it, hours. It kind of reminded me of the the Delos videos where you know they're. Yeah. Fast forwarding through all their GoPro footage. And even the music that you did was kind of similar. I liked it. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, it was probably embedded in my brain. That's why Ooh. I did it. Uh, SV Delos is uh, the boat show on YouTube that I watched for like oh, five, six years. Okay. That's why my dad went sailing. Oh, okay. But um, but yeah, I, I wish we had 40 hours because I could have really done some shit. And I know, you, but it's like I, I did it at like, I started at like noon, ended at like 4 a.m. or something. Right. Yeah. But um, well, and that's, I think that's not an issue, but it's certainly something to consider. Like, if we had more time, and oh, not that we want to spend a lot of time on that, but man, it would be fun keep, to spend a lot of time. Keep it easy, on. but we could even do color grading or all the right. you know, writing everything up. It'd be nice. But, dude, it was fun, man. And and you know what? It, it looks funny, huh, Kobe? Like, when you're out there with the GoPro and I'm sitting there with a fucking selfie stick and we're, you know, doing all this shit, like, it seems funky, but then when you put it together in post production and you make it look good, it's, it's all worth it. Well, those guys in the store were kind of tripping out because you were walking around with the camera. And they're like, "Who is this guy?" Yeah, yeah, I thought they were gonna tell me something. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Now what? Now that I'm thinking uh, about we it, we definitely yeah. haven't we definitely haven't changed our grease for the burritos and corn dogs in four months. I hope yeah. it's not health inspector. Uh, you know that may have something to do with my stomach issues. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> there it is, dude. We got we had a uh, minute mark food. I shit you not. I I think it might, dude, because that was some of the nastiest. You were sick. Chicken. During the podcast? Yeah, remember I was telling you, like, that was nasty. When did you start getting sick? Like, the night before or something? Well, I th- yeah, it was, like, Friday. Yeah, around Friday night. Like, I just started feeling funky. And then I, fucking, I was eating garbage food. I was telling my wife, left town for a week. And so when she was gone, I was eating fucking stupid-ass food. Like, I never cooked once. Kobe, teach uh, Ventura, teach Nick how to cook, like, basic <laughs> shit. Like, just a steak or something, chicken. All right. Dude, if it doesn't come out of a box, I'll I don't that. fucking cook it. <laughs> I was like that for a long time, but man, you're going to love it when you learn how to cook because it's way better and you get way more for cheaper. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, but you know what? Um, Dude, that's, like, that's part of my decompression at the end of the, the day, too, is cooking myself food. No, oh, nice. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, I'm glad you said that, Kobe, because it's fucking fun, man. You know what? And I, unfortunately, mm-hmm. I didn't take my drone out there and I didn't post any pictures or stories on our Instagram story when we were out on the river. I did fly my drone out to the L. I got some footage of the L and I got some footage of the high school because all that's just B-roll shit, you know? Uh, but mm-hmm. hell yeah, dude. I'll take my fucking uh, GoPro and my drone and we'll, we'll just see what happens. All right, cool. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. Well, well uh, then I guess I'll see you in the morning, unless this is all just for the podcast and you're being a poser. What are you talking about? He doesn't think you're going to go. You're not really going. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're breaking. <laughs> There's a volume right here, Nick. There's a volume. <laughs> No, but yeah, I was telling Jay, you know, coincidentally, uh, you know, I was telling my wife about it because again, I wasn't, I wasn't planning on going, you know, I was thinking, well, I have to work. I'm not really feeling well. I spent, actually, I spent a lot of money over the weekend, you know, and I was like, ah, maybe I shouldn't go. And then my wife was asking me, oh, do you work this weekend? I'm like, no, I I don't, you know, and she's like, well, you know, any plans? Well, Brian's bachelor's party this weekend, you know, and I I don't know. She's like, you're not going to go. I said, nah, I don't think so. You know, I told I'm not feeling well. I'm kind of broke. You know, she's like, you should go. You, you need to go. Like He's your friend. You know, this is once in a lifetime. Get out of the house. Yeah, get out of the house, yeah. right? You need to decompress. And she's like, just go. And I'm like, okay. I, I cashed in my can so I could go. Nice. I like your style, Kobe. But did you, did you uh, get like a million? I rattlesnake while I was doing it. Did you get a million dollars back from her cans? Because <laughs> you have so many. <laughs> Fuck no. I got 67 bucks. God, damn. That's, yeah. That's pretty good. That's fucking awesome. I'm Kobe, how many bags did you have? Shit. You underestimate the amount of beers that I drink. <laughs> Dude, last time I went to go my catch brother saw like- My brother saw my pile back there, and he's like, that's a lot of beers. <laughs> John says the same shit whenever he sees it. He's like, I'm like, Dude, that's my savings account. So do you drink only cans? <laughs> uh, no, lately I've been drinking bottles because I switched over to that uh, Corona lately. Oh, okay. But like before that, it was Bud Lights or Sam 76 or... Um, 
eight oh five. Uh, that I like that beer that I showed up to my clip that uh, yeah. Firestone Walker Lager. Mm-hmm. That's in cans. It's I really love, good. I love that stuff. That was good stuff. But um, Kobe, how well, how many beers does it take for when you start feeling a little buzz? Six to eight. <laughs> Not like <laughs> damn. On, a, on an empty <laughs> on an empty. Stomach? So if you have three beers, you don't feel anything. No, if I have three beers and I stop, I'm gonna take like a two hour nap. Oh shit! Okay. Interesting. You know what? Last time I, but, but, well, I don't know. Maybe I mean a lot of times I screw myself over and I haven't eaten anything. Mm. So like maybe like around halfway through my fifth beer, I'm like, whoa, I need to eat some chips and dip or something. Dude, I get buzzed off. Of yeah, as long as I keep drinking, I'll stay awake. Yeah, two, three. Yeah, yeah dude. Shit, I'll... Nick, we're gonna drink more than that on the way to Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. So Nick's driving. <laughs> Allegedly. You know, no, what, I'm man, driving. I was gonna say, man, I um. Uh, Last time I cashed my cans, and I thought I had a lot, but it was cans and bottles. I think I got like seven dollars, dude. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, <laughs> obviously I don't drink. Well, I have had this big old bag. It's like a bag that I ordered sand in, so it's like three feet by three feet by three feet. So three feet wide, three wow. feet long, and three feet tall. Damn! And that was overflowing. I had a fifty-five gallon drum overflowing, and then I had a like a regular like outside trash can with my plastic that was like half full Damn. because there's water and beer so that's how that's how i hydrate yeah good for you Kobe. so i don't drink a whole lot of water but yeah that's 67 bucks damn that's a lot of money that's pretty good well i think mm-hmm. uh we're gonna have to wrap this up we lost the video sd cards full that means we've gone over two hours um so uh thanks for calling in Kobe. cowboy Kobe. of course Cowboy I'll, Kobe. I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, we'll be talking to you soon. We'll see you later, buddy. Nick, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> All right. See ya. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the Water Tower Podcast, episode number 22. I can't believe we're at 22 already, Jay. It's flying by. 22. 22. 22. 22 tacos, por favor. Tacos. Uh, yeah, 22, man. So uh, thanks for tuning in. If you watch this far, good for you, motherfuckers, because we love that shit. So uh, don't forget to... Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow us on all the social media some likes. Share with your friends. And uh, hey, if you want to buy us some beer next time, uh, hit that Patreon link. It's right below. Uh, So we'll see you uh, on episode number 23. Peace. Peace out.